Maryville Hockey starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Maryville University Hockey Center. Another season of Maryville Hockey right here in Chesterfield, Missouri, alongside Chuck Krause, Todd Panula. I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for the Maryville Saints pregame show brought to you by the St. Louis Science Center right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Fellas, it's good to be back. Another season of Maryville Hockey is upon us. We're just moments away from the Saints taking on the McKendry Bearcats. Yeah, it was a little bit of a longer summer than uh, Coach Hogan and the, the guys would have maybe liked, but we're back on the ice right now. Yeah, I mean, what can you do? It, it's a long summer. They didn't go out like they wanted to, but we're back, guys. New season, a lot of new players. It's Maryville Hockey. Yeah, last season the team finished up 18-10 and 10 and lost to Indiana Tech in the national tournament. I know this team is hungry to get back after it this season, and it starts right here at home taking on the McKendry Bearcats, a team that they beat last night by a final score of 4-3. to three. Yeah, it was an interesting contest. Uh, they gave up the first goal, Maryville did, so McKendry got off to a good start. Maryville rattled off the next two, then Maryville let up the next two, so it was a back-and-forth affair, but the Saints ended up with a victory in their first game. Yeah, they end up with the victory, but you can't not say something about McKendry's goaltender. Standing on his head, facing 42 shots from the Maryville faithful, uh, it's a 4-3 win, it's a victory in the books, but I'm sure Maryville wants to put it on a little bit harder tonight. Absolutely. Chad Purdy was fantastic last night. He'll be in the cage tonight for the McKendry Bearcats. Last night, uh, Parker Saka, who is a new face to this uh, program, was in between the pipes last night. A lot of new faces this season for the Saints. A lot of old players, a lot of leaders are on their way out now, and that includes a new captain for the Saints. T.J. Prexler is the new captain, and we caught up with him earlier. Here's T.J. Prexler talking about what it means to be a leader right here for the Maryville Saints. T.J., what does it mean to you to be named captain of the Maryville Saints? Um, I mean, first and foremost, it's an incredible honor being here the last, um, going into my fifth year, just uh, seeing what this program has been through and kind of being here since um, our first season, D1. Um, it means a lot to me. I'm really excited to, to help lead this team to future su success. And what have you learned playing under Captain Jack Harrison the last couple seasons? Uh, playing under Jack, I mean, we were line mates a lot too. I just learned a lot of um, the intangibles that come with the game. I felt like when we played together, our games complemented each other me being a little bit more offensive, him defensive. So just learning, you know, the little things, um, sticks and lanes, blocking shots, um, and then just also learning from his character, just how much he cares about this team. Um, it was a real privilege uh, playing for Jack and him being our captain the last three years. What's your mentality now in the role of a captain? My mentality now is um, just uh, bring the best version of myself every single day, um, work my hardest, uh, support my teammates, be there for everyone, and do whatever I can to uh, help this team win games. Um, again, just being the best version of myself every day, not looking too, uh, too much um, into the future, just kind of focusing day by day, winning each day, and then um, taking it from there. Finally, how excited are you to be in a leadership group with Jake Charte and Luke McLeod? Uh, Jake and Luke, I mean, they're great hockey players, but they're also brothers. Um, so I'm really excited to have them support me, and then also knowing that they have the best interest of the team as well. Um, it's super exciting to have them part of the leadership group. T.J. Prexler, the new captain of the Maryville Saints, talking about what it means to be a leader right here in this organization. And th this is going to be a different year. We have, Like I said, we have some new faces around the rink. But I'm excited to see what these guys can prove. I know Coach Hogan said that's going to be a, a little bit of a mix these first four games, yeah. getting guys in, the lineup and whatnot. What are you guys expecting to see from some of these new faces under new leadership? Yeah, it's, it's going to be a different kind of transition. Uh, it's been a long time since we haven't been able to say Captain Jack yeah, in terms of I know, who's I'm wearing the C. It. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you've got TJ Prexler, a big time holdover, a big time producer, taking over a leadership role. And he's going to have to usher in some of these new players, kind of show them the ropes, show them how to play Maryville kind of hockey. Uh, but the team itself, I think, is really going to be kind of transitioning to a slightly different style. A lot of size, a lot of speed. And that's been kind of the, the impetus that they've been looking for in terms of their recruiting the last few years. Yeah, when you bring 13, 14 new guys on, you know, they're all great players. We've all seen what they can bring. 
now it's the, the the point of bringing them all together and letting them gel, right? Yeah. Uh, talking about TJ Plexer, we saw Jack Harrison, the, the captain that we're used to, talk about TJ, and, and he Jack couldn't say anything better about TJ. You know, right. that is the captain that should be in place. TJ's excited. I know the wrestling team's excited. Here we go, boys. And these fans are excited, too, as the lights have dimmed down. The fans are getting excited for the home opener here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. One of the new faces that is in the program this year is Josh Olson. He had two assists last night against McKendry. Our ringside reporter Lydia Manning caught up with Josh. You had two assists in your first game with Maryville last night. How did that feel? It felt great. It was nice to get get some points on the stat line there and everything, and uh, just a good, good way to start the season overall. You just came to Maryville from Missouri State. What's your experience been like so far? I mean, I love it here. The whole program is just like the place to be with uh, with training off off after practices and like doing video and having all the all the stuff that's given to us is just like this is this is the place to be. I love it here so far. You're about to play in your first game with Maryville as part of a home team. What are you looking forward to tonight? I'm just looking forward to the crowd. Like I've been told from all the guys that this atmosphere is crazy for this home opener. So I'm really looking forward to that and uh, hopefully try to get a goal, see how loud the building can get. Thank you. Thank you. That was the Missouri State transfer, Josh Olson. Once again, he had two assists in last night's game. We're hoping to see more of that tonight against the Bearcats. Uh, and he's a right winger. You look at the right side of this lineup, you also have to look at the defense in Brett Ursulak, who's also a new face here. Lydia Manning caught up with Brett as well. You scored your first goal in your first game last night. How did that feel? Uh, it felt pretty good. Um, great way to start the season. Um, start the, my first game in the league, and um, hopefully I can keep, uh, keep it going and get many more this season. What was your mindset like last night in your first collegiate game? Uh, just adjusting, really. Um, it's a different pace, different everything than what I'm used to, and um, I was just looking to adjust. Got lucky with the goal there to, to add on to that, so it felt good. And what are you looking forward to about tonight, playing in front of the Maryville home crowd? I've heard a lot about uh, this game and the, the Blackout game. The um, crowd's supposed to be pretty good, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and hopefully we can give them a good show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Brett Ursulak, right defenseman, one of the new faces here at the Maryville squad. Uh, guys, these new faces, I know Coach Hogan, Coach Hogan is very excited to see what he has in this team. Yeah, I mean, a lot of new players, a lot of new blood injected into this program, and it, it's kind of a new day for this team. And I mean, they're just kind of building on top of what they've already established in the past. Absolutely. New beginnings, new season, new team. Guys, I'm so ready for this. I know Coach Hogan's ready to go as well. Here's Coach Hogan before we get to tonight's starting lineups. You started your season with a 4-3 win over McKendry last night. How do you carry that momentum over to tonight? I, I don't know if it was momentum. I think there was a lot of uh, good things of, from yesterday, but the second period was an absolute roller coaster. So the highs and the lows, the ebbs and flows of the game, I think uh, we can do a lot of things better. So I, I wouldn't really recognize it as momentum, more of just a lot of things to work on. Um, and we have a little different lineup, so excited to see what they can do tonight. You got to see some of your newest players in action for the first time last night. What did you see? I thought Hunter Flores had a, had a fantastic game. I thought uh, Campbell McLean. We're trying to figure out kind of where he's going to fall in the lineup, but uh, you know, someone that wasn't really sure if we're going to be in the lineup to them being out there in the last two minutes. Um, all props um, to him and, and how he played his yesterday. So he's in the lineup again. Th those two played really well. Parker got his first uh, win as a as a collegiate athlete. It was probably a little, um, I wouldn't say touch and go, but not as smooth as he would have liked it to have been. And I, I don't really think a lot of that was his, his fault to get a goalie interference there that ends up in the back of the net. So um, all in all, I, th I thought the new guys brought a lot of energy. I thought Hendo and, and Deeks, um, you know, Urs and Ferry had some good minutes too. So a lot of good from yesterday. Um, we have another couple guys in the lineup tonight. So trying to just kind of figure out what this is going to look like over the next couple weeks. And what would you say your keys to success are for tonight? Um, I, again, I, I, I go back to yesterday. It was an absolute roller coaster there for in the second period. There was six goals scored. You know, you go into the period down one, you end 4-3 going into the third. Um, I can't speak for, for Coach Henson, but I don't think anyone likes that back and forth a little bit in the second period. I'd like us to be more of a level seven, kind of even keel, and, and, and get to our game uh, much more often than yesterday. All right. Thanks, Coach.
Guys, there's new players, there's new systems. Coach Hogan has talked about that. But the mentality of this group has to stay the same throughout the, the, throughout the course of the year. Yeah, the way that they want to play Maryville hockey is they want to play fast, they want to play hard, they want to be physical. They want to get off to good starts in every single game. And they didn't necessarily do that last night, but they won. They're going to have to get off to a better start here tonight. Yeah, it, you know, it, it all comes down to these guys buying into Coach Hogan's system. He does, there's no secret of how he wants to play. He yeah. tells the guys how he wants to play. It's these guys coming together, gelling as one group, and then getting W's out there. Well, we talked about T.J. Prexler being the captain. Let's go over the starting lineups real quick. T.J. Prexler will be on right wing, centering that line as Lucas Adams, who had two goals in last night's game. And then Hunter Flores, a new face, will be on that left side for the forward group. On the back end, Ben McArthur, left defense, and Colt Corbs will be on right defense. And starting in net, he did not get the nod last night. He will tonight in the home opener. It's Ed Coffey. Guys, what are you expecting to see from the big man? I think he's going to come out with something to prove. He wants to establish himself. He's the only holdover in terms of the net minders. He wants to show that he's still the top guy and that everybody has to beat him. Yeah, Ed being the, being the veteran goaltender, fellas, I, I expect a lot out of him. He's going to put it out on the ice. Well, it should be a good one. We're going to send it down to the rink side. We have the national anthem. It's Charles Glenn is singing the national anthem. Well, folks, that'll do it for our pregame show here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Don't go anywhere. It's the Saints taking on the McKendry Bearcats next. This has been your Maryville Saints pregame show brought to you by the St. Louis Science Center. Maryville power play, 836 remaining on the front. Shot on between the wickets. He scores! Except the loss, I'm hard-headed. There's a little bit of manage to my method. Many falling off that fine line that I'm treading. I risk anything to be not letting nobody rob me of my victory. Number one, that's what I'm meant to be. When by any means, only thing that makes sense to me. I can make nice or make history. I got that dog in me. Yeah, turn me up. Big energy, got the crowd going up.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go, the home opener at the Maryville University Hockey Center between the Saints and the Kendry Bearcats is underway. Alongside Chuck Krause and Todd Panula, I'm Andrew Marsh as the Saints in all black with the red pants going up against the Bearcats who are wearing gray tonight in the black pants, skating from right to left. The Saints with the puck down low. Prexler out front, oh, opportunity right inside the slot. That one's knocked away. Prexler finds Adams. Adams back to Prexler. Prexler shoots one on. That one goes just wide of the net. In the corner, fired on. Stick save made by the netminder tonight for the McKendree Bearcats and Chad Purdy, who stopped 44 of 48 last night in their loss to the Saints, a 4-3 final. No icing. Timon Prexler stretch pass. A nifty move at the blue line by Josh Olson, who had two assists in lights last night's affair. Pass out front, hits off his skate. Zlotti with it in the corner, far side at the hash marks. He loses the puck, still with it, and able to come out with it are the Bearcats as they dump it in. Guys, I like the pace so far to this game. Yeah, really, for, really good first couple shifts for Maryville. The passers are right on the tape. They're looking very crisp. Shot well wide into the corner. Back below the goal line. Able to come out with it. Are the Saints. That's Jack Henderson who makes the pass to Timon. Timon over for Hunter. Hunter loses it. And now Timon Prexler will go back. No icing called. On a backhand, he reverses it. Stretch pass at the red line. Will Smith with the puck on the backhand. He'll get it in deep. Arm is up. Perhaps we will see our first penalty of the night. Yeah, kind of a silly penalty there by Ben Anderson. He just put the stick out. I don't know if he was trying to connect with the player or, or just spun around and it was incidental. But regardless, the Saints are going to go on to the man advantage. Yeah, like you said, Marshy, great pace. Puck possession for Maryville. They're, they're getting the pucks in deep. And when they turn it over, they're getting it right back. So great pace so far by the Maryville Saints. An opportunity with 18-14 remaining here in the first period to take a 1-0 lead. Smith with it. Drop pass. Adam shoots. Scores! <laughs> Maryville strikes first. And it's Lucas Adams, his third of the season, with 18-10 remaining in the first period. The Saints capitalize on the power play and lead one to nothing. Why wait? You might as well do it right off the face off. Just a couple quick puck movements. Adams got it here on the near side, and he was able to bury it. Excuse me, as uh, Purdy was almost unbeatable last night. But the Saints get a quick one on just their second shot. First shot on the power play. So a D to D pass as McKendry will send it the length of the ice. However, it hits off the skate of one of the linesmen. So now Maryville will take possession inside the neutral zone, entering into the offensive zone. Protecting the puck is Campbell McLean. Shot on net. Oh, what a save by Chad Purdy as the whistle is blown with 17.47 remaining here in the first period as Purdy made a nice save on that far side post. He's going to have to make a ton of saves like he did last night to keep this one close. Yeah, that's a lot of what Maryville fans saw last night. Purdy just standing on his head. It should be two to nothing if any other goaltender for any other team was in the Nets, but right now Purdy is seeing the puck well. McKendry unable to clear it as it goes off the glass. It's gloved down by Jackson White. McKendry with it. An errant pass, it does leave the zone. Going back for it is Timon Prexler. Pardon me, Brett Ursula. Kept in by McKendry. They fumble the puck. McLean with it. He has Ursula with him. Driving the net, shot on. That one goes out of play. We get a whistle with 17 13 remaining here in the first period. No shots on net for McKendry. Maryville with three so far as they lead one to nothing early in this one. All it takes is four seconds, fellas. They get on the first power play here in front of their fans. Four seconds in, Lucas Adams buries it. What a great start for the Maryville Saints. So an offensive zone faceoff coming towards the glove side of Chad Purdy. Taking the draw will be Luke McLeod for the Saints. He wins it. Colt Corps with it. Shot on, pad save made by Purdy. Rimmed around to the far side. 
as McKendry looks to exit. It bounces off his skate. It's smacked at the red line. Corpse grabs it and will send it around. Purdy comes out of his net. Will Smith on the puck. Smith back down low. They yeah. shoot, they score! Oh, baby! Maryville off to a 2-0 lead with 16.52 remaining here in the first period. An unbelievable job by Sam Edwards, who was waiting for the pass by Will Smith and stuffs it on the near side post. That's why you keep your stick in the ready position because Edwards was on his backhand, but he kept the stick down low to where he could make a quick decision and the puck just kind of wrapped off the stick over the goaltender and it's two to nothing. So Coffee with it. Saints go D to D as they look to break out. It's flipped out of the zone. Going to be a foot race. Into the corner, bumped off the puck. Is Hunter Flores. He's still battling for it. Up to the blue line, wrist shot. That one didn't make its way through, but it's gobbled up by Adams. Adams with it, sends it back down low to the near side. It's intercepted by McKendry. Down low. Pops out, Adams shot, hits off a skate. And now able to pick it up is Allen Leventon for McKendry. He turns it over. Time in Prexler. He finds Flores who gets it in deep and will head off for a change. Rimmed around to the far side. Skating with the puck now for the Bearcats is Reichel Davis. He makes the pass as the Bearcats enter into the zone. Zlotti with support. And the Saints are able to exit the zone. Tymon Prexler steps up as he activates to his brother TJ. Tymon trying to dance around, unable to get it. Rebound yeah. shot, they score! <laughs> Jackson Zlotti! Right time, right place, 15-38. Maryville on top, 3-0 here in the first period. Todd, when it rains, it pours, buddy. Here we go, 3-0 Maryville. Like you said, Marshy, right time, right place, puck in the back of the net. And this is kind of the double-edged sword for the McKendry perspective of playing a goaltender back-to-back -back nights. They were hoping for the same kind of magic that Purdy provided last night, but it's just been an onslaught from the Maryville side. What is going on? Hey, <laughs> it's Maryville hockey, Marshy. We're back. We are back indeed. A great Friday night here in September, September 15th, the night that Maryville scored three goals in less than five minutes. I mean, we've seen it on the other side, guys. One night, Ed Coffey plays outstanding. The next night, the team lights him up, right? So uh, it's so something that's going on right now with McKendry and Chad Purdy. He played wonderfully last night, but it's hard not to play like this as Maryville is in front of this sold-out crowd. And you can't be surprised that McKendry already taking their time out this early in the game. If you're Maryville, you have to absolutely love this. You want to get your guys energized. You want to get the crowd energized. We know this team plays well in front of a big crowd, and tonight is no exception. The fans definitely turned out tonight. Yeah, don't let the fire marshal in. I'm not sure uh, we're quite legal right now. <laughs> Come on, Todd. He's probably watching. Jeez, Todd. Well, that's why I said don't let him in. Well, hey, you go barricade that door, and Chuck and I will take I over. Will, I With will. With the biceps, he can do it, Marshy. <laughs> he could. He could. I, I mean, we haven't seen Todd all summer, but he's definitely been working out, I can tell. <laughs> McKendry with it inside the neutral zone. They'll get it in deep as Ed Coffey comes out of his cage and sends it around to the near side. Buck is loose. However, it squirts back down below the goal line. Far side, Zlotti, who just scored the third goal for the Saints, picks it up. And now it's sent to the near side blue line. Able to get it in is Jackson White with a little bit of help from Josh Olson. Puck on the far side of the ice. A scrum right by the McKendry. The, uh, the bench. I was about to say dugout for a second. Been watching baseball too much this summer. Not good baseball by any means, but baseball nonetheless. <laughs> However, it's hockey season, so Pitches no dugouts. Were thrown. We got benches here. With it now, Charche shoots one, blocked. That one fired just wide. Colts able to get it in, sends it around. 
Racing after it is Ben McArthur. He's able to keep it in for a brief second. However, he has help from his teammate and Cameron Ware. Puck's still at the blue line. Sharche able to get it in deep. Rims around the boards, far side. McKendry able to just clear it. And now McArthur will play it on the backhand as it skips over the stick of Ben Anderson. McArthur with it, rims it around. Cameron Ware stops it on his skate, finds McLean. McLean with it, enters into the zone, loses it. McArthur shoots one on, that one stopped. Corpse fires one on, it looked like it was redirected, but Purdy makes the stop. 13.50 remaining here as McKendry skates up ice. Joe McCormick drop passes it as he heads towards the net, looks to find the open pass. However, the Saints have the puck as they look to get out of the zone. They're able to clear it. McKendry will take possession of it inside the neutral zone at the red line, off the boards, and able to get it in. But taking a big hit was Jack Harris. Ben McArthur at the blue line. He's able to get up on his feet after laying that big hit. We have a whistle with 13.28 remaining here in the first period. Shots are 8-1 in favor of Maryville. They lead 3-0. Yeah, six and a half minutes into the period, McKendry just gets their first shot. Maryville's already up 3-0, and, and McKendry just took, took their first shot. So uh, good defense by Maryville. Shows that they're really uh, retroactive in the, in the offensive zone. And yeah, we just went through our longest stretch of hockey without a Maryville goal, so... Come on, Todd, it's why are you going to be so negative? Gosh, darn. It's all downhill. <laughs> well, welcome back, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting on Coach Hogan to conclude his conversation with the official as taking the faceoff for the McKendry Bearcats is Matias Alexandrov going up against Luke McLeod. Alexandrov pushes it forward, tried to get a shot off, but he couldn't. Timon Prexler with it. And he'll Whoops. send it out of play. Heads off the netting. And we'll have a whistle with 13-20. So is there, is there an over-under at uh, how many articles of clothing Coach Hogan removes? I was going to say, he, he, <laughs> he didn't wear the sport, sport jacket tonight. His brother Toppy did. So we'll see uh, if Toppy starts removing any clothing. Anyways, Mar Maryville. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> TJ Prexler with it. He finds Will Smith. Saints enter into the zone. Oh, Ooh. and Purdy gets taken out by Smith. Not sure if that was on purpose or not. Probably not, as he was just trying to skate back towards the puck. Little touch pass from McLeod to Smith. As McLeod is banged up against the boards. Saints still with the puck right at the red line. Timon able to get it in, but it hits off the stick of Tibish Okeji. Easy for you to say, Marshy. Yeah. yeah, the referee's checking out Purdy now because he kept shaking his left hand, so I think he landed a little bit awkwardly. Might have kind of tweaked his wrist a little bit. Yeah, as a goaltender, you don't expect to get your legs taken out from you like that. Todd, you were a goalie growing up. Did that ever happen to you? No, I usually did the taking out. <laughs> You pulled, little, you pulled yourself? Little Ed Belfour action. Ah. No, no. <laughs> Lucas Adams with it just inside his own blue line. Finds TJ Prexler, hits off his skate, and we'll get an offsides call with 12.25 remaining here in the first period. So three quick goals for the Saints. They've had some trouble finding their offense here in the last five minutes, thanks to Todd, who was being so negative not too long ago. <laughs> And if you're new to the broadcast, of course, you know, hockey players, they like to chirp on and off the ice. And yeah. Well, we're no stranger to that either, except for we have no opponents to chirp. We just chirp each other. Why not? Because that was a risky play in front of his own net, Brett Ursulak. But no harm, no foul as the Saints skate up ice. Here they come. Shot. Oh, they shoot. They score. What a goal. Jackson White, the defenseman, skates it in. It goes top shelf with 12.02 remaining here in the first period. A 4-0 lead for the Saints. A big hit in the middle of the ice. But Jackson White gets the puck, puts it short side over the glove side of Chad Purdy. 4-0 Maryville. Ninth shot on goal, Todd. 
12.02 left in the period. And what timing there to score the goal because I was going to mention how impressive it's been just in the short amount of time that we've played at the activation of the Maryville defense in terms of offensive play. And, I mean, that's always kind of been there, but you've also had guys that kind of stayed back at the blue line and stood in there. Right now it's just a five-man unit cycling in and out. Whether you're playing defense or forward, they're all looking out for each other. You love to see it. You really do love to see when the defenders activate. And this team is known for doing that. You see Time and Prexler, who will do something similar. This team is no stranger to having their defense activate. Oh. And they shoot, they score again! What is going on? 11.47, it's 5-0. That one slipped right through the wickets. The first shot on goal for the new McKendry goaltender as Chad Purdy got pulled, Marshy. That one's Josh Olson, who had two assists in last night's game. He gets rewarded tonight with a goal. Not a pretty goal by any means, but every goal counts. They don't ask how, they ask how many. And the Saints are up five rip right here with 11.47 remaining here in the first period. Yeah, when you look at the stat sheet at the end of the year, all that matters is it hit the back of the net. And Maryville wasting very little time. I mean, you, you get one at 7.58, another one at 8.13, and they're just chopping away at this game. And then McKendry gets a penalty there on, on, at the end of the play. So I would, I would imagine an unsportman's like or something like that, guys. Puck below the goal line. Skating up ice for the Saints. DJ Prexler, far side, that one blocked. Glove down, and we're going to hand pass. I believe there was a slash okay. on Jackson White as he was heading into the zone in college rules. Correct. If you do get a penalty, you still have to serve that penalty even if the, uh, the opposing team scores. Okay. I appreciate you clearing that up. Yeah. I mean, I could just be making that up. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's the rule. No, you're right. Still not sure how I feel about that, I'm wrong about, about a lot of though. things, yeah. guys. <laughs> I'm probably wrong about that, but it makes a lot of sense. You made it sound good. Thank you. You sold it. I appreciate that, fellas. Jackson Zlotty with it at the blue line. Skates it into the backhand. Loses his handle of the puck. Tries to send it back up top to Lucas Adams. He's able to keep it in. TJ Prexler with it. Adams up top to White. A weird pass over to Zlotty. However, White gets it back. Adams up top, White over to Zlotti, top of the circle, wrist, on, wrist shot on, that one's blocked. He's able to corral it and gives it back. White with it, top of the key, shoots one on, hits off the skate, and McKendry able to get it out of the zone. It's intercepted, White gets it back, however, and Lucas Adams will skate it into the zone. Adams with it, far side, corpse, shot, shoots, scores! It's Josh Olsen once again. 6 nothing Maryville, 10-32 remaining here in the first period. And it has been all Saints all night long. What a start here at home, fellas. Welcome to Maryville for Josh Olsen. Two assists last night, two goals so far here tonight. One on the power play. I mean, that's a heck of a start for his career with the Saints. Absolutely. Coming from Missouri State, a nice little rival with Maryville. And as you said, Todd, I'll repeat it. Welcome to Maryville, Josh Olson. So we're going to whistle with 10.25 remaining here in the first period. Lots of new faces, new numbers. But it seems like this is the same mentality that Coach Hogan has been instilling in all the players since he has taken the reins here at Maryville. It doesn't matter who the player is, this team is going to compete. Yes. Shot on, that one's well wide as it goes left of the cage. And now McKendry with an opportunity. Shot on, able to make the stop. Is that Coffey? Another shot just wide of the glove. Far side corner, protecting the puck for McKendry is Reichel Davis. Pass out front, nice move, right in the slot. Puck is loose, 
and able to put a glove on it is Ed Coffey with 9.47 remaining here in the first period. Uh, so their best opportunity of the night was right there. Like you said, 9.47 left. Uh, it took a little over half the period for them to get in the zone and get a face off to the left of Ed Coffey. And those are key moments for any goaltender when you haven't had hardly any work for the first 10 minutes. Right. And then all of a sudden you get a little flurry of activity. You've got to keep yourself calm. You've got to keep everything within your normal flow. And Ed Coffey did that right there, made it look easy. Shot from the blue line is blocked by Luke McLeod. And Will Shot. Smith is tripped up. However, he, he was able to get the pass off. And uh, that was Sam Edwards who fired that one on. So good hustle by Will Smith. Tripping call. And the Saints are heading back to the power play with 9.34 remaining here in the first period, up 6 to nothing. And we got to know our, our good pal Jeff Crenshaw is happy to see this team up six to nothing. As I'm standing right next to him right yeah, now. Yeah, he our doesn't even, he, Eric and he, ignores, he ignores you. That's fine. Of course he did. I was calling for a shot. I thought Will Smith was in the clear, getting that penalty shot tripped up. But hey, we'll take another power play. Heading to the sin bin is Ben Anderson for the third time, the sophomore. We'll see if Maryville can capitalize on the power play once again. Weaving through the zone is Josh Olson. Oh. Looking for a natural hat trick. Hey. As he has scored the past two goals. Approaching the nine minute mark remaining here in the first period. Saints on the power play leading six to nothing. Ursulak with it. Shot on that one's blocked. Goes back up top to Ursulak, who's able to corral it at the blue line. Finds Tymon Prexler back down low. It hits off a stick. Prexler gets it back. Up top of the blue line, Ursulak loses the puck, and now it is slapped away. It'll be a foot race, but it looks like Tymon Prexler will get to it first as he'll pass it up the near side boards. He'll find Sam Edwards, who will skate up ice just inside of his own zone with the old drop pass that we've seen become a big thing now on the power play, especially in the NHL, you see that a lot. Not sure if I'm a big fan of it, but a lot of people in the NHL think it's a good thing. A lot of old schoolers are not a fan of it. Talk to many hockey coaches from back in the day, Marshy, who don't like it very much. I would say I'm old school as well, but uh, you know I'm only 27 years old. <laughs> as here's an opportunity for McKendry as they shoot it just wide. Able to pick it up for the Saints' as force. He We'll find Adams. Adams drags, shoots, and that one goes just wide. Jackson White with it. He has a goal in tonight's game. His shot on. That one stopped, and it will go out of play. 15 seconds remaining on the power play for the Saints. 7.48 left to go here in the first period as the Saints lead 6 to nothing. You know, this is one of those games where you get a lot of goals in the beginning, a lot of goals in the first period. You can't let the you know the the, the gas off the pedal. Uh, yeah. You got to keep going, guys, and and that's something that that John Hogan really instills in his guys. Don't don't let it back. Don't you know shy back just because you're up by by a few goals. Saints win the faceoff. Corpse with it. Over to White. Shot is blocked. Trickles down below the goal line. White will get it back far side. Back down low. T.J. Prexler out front, and that one goes right under the stick of Will Smith, but a great job to keep it in. Excellent job by Jack Henderson. T.J. with it, back down low. Smith trying to protect the puck and spin away. He's below the dots. Still with it, then loses it. Bearcats able to flip it into the neutral zone as it's gloved down by Corpse. He'll go off the wall, but it's sent back in. Cross corner dump in, back for it is Benji Rutkai on his back. On his backhand, he'll drop it for Corpse. Seven minutes remaining here in the first period. T.J. Prexler with it, dumps it in. Stop behind the cage. Corpse, the defenseman, going in on the four check. I love that. Yeah, I love to see it. <laughs> Cross ice pass, intercepted. Shot on, and that one is stopped by Ed Coffey into the glove. 6.42 remaining here in the first period as we get a whistle. Shots in favor of Maryville, 12 to 5. Now you say Jack Henderson. That's going to be hard to get used to. Saying Jack Harrison for the past five years, fellas, and now Jack yeah. Henderson comes in. So 
You make and a then great we got, point. We got Jack Harris on McKendry. Lots of Jacks. Puck comes out of the zone. Flipped in, 6.35 remaining here in the first period. Behind his own net, Ben McArthur surveys the ice. Looks up and he'll float it into the neutral zone. It goes the length of the ice, no icing, says the linesman. Able to beat out that icing regardless is Campbell McLean. He has it at the blue line. A rifle of a backhand pass to the far side. It's sent back down by Garrett Hunter. McLean with it. Back down low for Cameron Ware. Up top to the blue line, McArthur. Back to McLean. Sends it back down low for Ware. Ware with it. He'll pass it to the far side corner. No one's there. However, a couple Maryville Saints hustling over to get it. But the puck will come out of the zone as Ben McArthur grabs it at his own blue line. A little tussle down in their own zone was Garrett Hunter and Reichold Davis of McKendry. Able to scoop up the puck. Are the Bearcats a shot on? And that one goes just wide. And we'll get a whistle with 5.37 remaining here in the first period. Yeah, a little sloppy there from Hunter. Just kind of got a little careless with it, right in that dangerous area on the ice. That you don't want to turn the puck over. I always remember Kelly Chase talking about that. Within about three feet either side of the blue line, it's the worst place to turn it over, and we saw right, right there, but um, McKendry wasn't able to capitalize. 5.30 remaining here in the first period as the Saints look to exit their zone. A big hit right at the top of the circle. Some of the Maryville faithful may be looking for a penalty. Drop pass, Lottie with it, shot on. That one stopped, and we get a whistle with 5.14 remaining here in the first period. So... I don't know if I can, there we go. A little malfunction. The wonders of technology. Yeah, we're working out the kinks here. It's the first game of the season. For us, at least. Face off won by the Saints. Olsen drops it back. White over to Ursulak. Olsen with it up top for White. White finds Olsen. Olsen with it. Ursulak near side. Blue line back to the dot for Olsen. Olsen looks up. Still with it, protecting the puck. He was bumped off the puck for a second, but able to get it back, and Maryville will just send it back down the zone. And McKendry will exit the zone. So far tonight, I think not only has Maryville dominated the game, but I think a big part of them keeping McKendry at bay has been their neutral zone play. I feel like they've dominated in the, in the, in the neutral zone, Todd. Yeah, and... What's been impressive is just the, the fact that they've been so quick. I mean, everything until right here we get a turnover, but everything through the neutral zone has been on the tape, very quick in terms of skating and the passing as we get a cross-ice pass that connects. But Maryville has done a great job of owning both the offensive and the neutral zone, and therefore they haven't had to have a whole lot of play in their defensive end. Maryville with it inside the McKendry zone. Behind the net. Edwards out front. Oh, that puck goes right off the stick of Will Smith, who was in the low slot. However, it bounced off his stick and then went wide of the cage. So dumped in. That one's on net. Coffee will make the stop. Pass off the boards. It comes out of the zone. So McKendry will go D to D and just regroup inside their own zone. What a big hit from Sam Edwards. Maryville, what I've seen a difference in this year compared to last year, the speed has always been there, but it seems like the speed mixed with getting out of the zone, but also making plays with the puck. Yeah, I was, I was thinking the same thing a few minutes ago. Control is the word that I would use. Yes. They're fast, but they know what oh, they're what doing say. with the puck. It's not speed just for speed's sake. Exactly. Todd, you, you took the words right out of my mouth. That one's flipped inside the neutral zone. Hunter able to knock it away. I was trying to dance around Hunter was Cade Rosansky. Off the skate of Prexler. 
He'll try and find Adams, who will pick it up. Tries to give it back to Prexler, but it hits off a stick. He's still battling for the puck down in the corner. Near side, it comes up top of the blue line. Timon Prexler with it. Timon. He'll spin away. And it's intercepted. A breakaway opportunity for McKendry. In shot. And that one's stopped by Ed Coffey with 2.19 remaining here in the first period. Ed Coffey keeps it a 6 nothing game. And a relatively easy save there for Coffey as well. And I think that's what kind of threw off the breakaway attempt, both the speed of time and Prexler. So the forward for McKendry didn't think he had a whole lot of time to make any kind of move. Yeah. And then you've got a big man in Coffey in the net as he makes a blocker save here on the long shot. But uh, right now, just McKendry doesn't even necessarily look like they think they can score, and that poses a problem. So the Saints with the puck. Jake Charche with it at the blue line. He'll dump it in. Waiting for the puck on the far side of the ice. His newcomer, Campbell McLean. That one comes out of the zone. We are approaching the one-minute mark remaining here in the first period. This has been a long period, Todd. Well, I mean, you get six goals, it's going to stretch out the time. Oh, here comes McKendry in. Forehand shot, they shoot, and they score. They find the back of the net, and that's big for McKendry. Steven Breitschert scores for the Bearcats with 134 remaining here in the first to make it a 6-1 game. We've seen that within the last little less than five minutes, I would say, to where the, the Maryville defensive unit and some of the forwards as well they've gotten a little sloppy in terms of their puck control as they're leaving the zone it led to a breakaway a few moments ago and uh, and now obviously the the shutout goes by the wayside as well and and that's not necessarily going to sit well with Ed Coffey so as a goalie would you here's a question I'm posing if you're going to give up a goal like that you, you have a shutout going. Would you rather give it up right now, or would you rather give it up late in the third period? I'd rather give it up early. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> so, what I'm thinking, too. To worry, yeah, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You, you, you can just kind of sit back and focus on the shots and everything, and especially when you've got a cushion like this. You don't necessarily mind as much. It's more of a personal thing to even try for it. I think as a goaltender as uh, the Saints have the puck and squirts off the stick of Colt Corps. Ben McArthur's there to corral it, and he'll send it. Josh Olson gloves it down to the backhand, and that one will be smothered by McKendry Netminder. Brady Weiss. But what I was saying, as a, as a goaltender, I feel like other than the team aspect of obviously wanting to get a win, you want some of that personal achievement. You look at the, the save percentage, and right now McKendry with only eight shots, a goal goes in, not as many shots, that save percentage goes down a bit. Right, and it's funny you bring that up because whether it was playing myself or, or playing video game hockey, yeah. That was always my mentality to where it was like, okay, if you let up a goal, it's like, well, if you get at least to 10 shots. And McKendry scores once again. Able to put it in the back of the net is Trevor Voida, the defenseman from Naples, Florida. With 29.5 ticks remaining here in the first period, it's a 6-2 game. Still in favor of Maryville, but two goals towards the end of the first period. Coach Hogan probably not going to be too happy about that, even with a four-goal lead. And, and just to kind of complete my thought, now obviously you need 20 shots against to get that save percentage up above uh, 900 where you'd like it. But, but yeah, they, they've gotten a little sloppy here late in the first period, and that was kind of the worry. You race out six goals uh, very early in the contest. Everything's going, everything's clicking, and... Throughout a 60-minute contest, it's not going to be that way through 60 minutes. So now it's up to Maryville to just kind of rebound. Here's Smith. Smith, back door, looking. Oh, they shoot. They score! They get it right back. 
It's Sam Edwards with 10 seconds remaining here in the first period. He makes it a 7-2 game. Second and third effort there for Edwards as he kept hacking and whacking. The puck was loose on the doorstep. Weiss could never really find it. He was doing snow angels in the crease. And Edwards was able to finally tap it home. And that's the type of hustle that you need to have towards the end of a period. Wouldn't say it was a crucial goal for the Saints as they lead 7-2 at the end of this first period, but one to keep the crowd in the game. As you know, these Saints fans, these students, they love seeing their team score, and they've done a lot of that here in the first period. The Saints lead 7-2 after 20 minutes of play. We'll be back with our intermission report, so don't go anywhere. You're watching the Maryville Saints right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Pepe, and I'm excited to show you today Hilt of Apartments. Come with me. We're in Elm. This is one of our five apartment buildings. And right now, we're going to take a look at our four-person apartment. Hey, my name is Drew. Uh, this is our four-bedroom apartment. As we first enter our apartment, we've got the living room. Uh, Maryville provides a couch, coffee table, and this chair. We added some of our own decorations, and they also provide this cable TV hookup. Um, we brought this couch ourselves just to make the room feel more homey. Um, and then we'll go check out the bedrooms. In our four bedroom apartment, we have one bedroom in the front, three bedrooms in the back that also have two bathrooms. Thanks so much for visiting our apartment. Let's hand it back over to Pepe. Right behind the apartments, we have this nice area where we can have a grill, we can hang out with friends, maybe do some homework. And then we also have a laundry room where we can do our laundry for free. Thank you for touring Hilltop Apartments with me. I hope to see you in campus soon. college hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus. Determination. Strategy and poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. This is the letter I've been telling you about. This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know 
that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. Welcome to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. It's time for the first intermission brought to you by Lou Fuse, Todd Panula. I'm Andrew Marsh. And, Todd, we have ourselves a 7-2 game already through 20 minutes of play. What were your thoughts about the Saints in their home opener so far? Well, the first 10 minutes are exactly what Maryville wanted. They came out yeah. strong. They came out fast, to say the least. It was about as good of 10 minutes of hockey as we've seen out of Maryville in quite some time. Uh, obviously the score line got out of hand in terms of uh, competitiveness overall but you score six goals in the first 10 minutes you get two power play goals yep. and and Josh Olson continued uh, what he showed last night picking up two assists against McKendry on the road two goals here this evening he's had a, a really good start to his career so far yeah, Josh Olson the way that he's been able to shoot the puck carry the puck control the puck I've been very impressed with what Olsen has done so far. Like you mentioned, he had two assists last night and two goals tonight. Thought he would get the natural hat trick. You know he was looking for it, but I'm sure we'll see some more of Josh Olsen, not only throughout the remainder of this game, but the rest of this season. We have Lydia Manning, our ringside reporter, with Josh Olsen right now. Let's send it down to them. I'm here with Josh Olson. Josh, two goals in the first period. How does it feel? Feels great. It's really nice getting that first one under and getting that second one is pretty awesome too. You're up 7-2 after the first period. How are you going to carry this momentum over into the second? Well, we just got to treat it like it's 0-0 going into the second period. We got to bring the intensity just like we did in the first and carry it through all the way to the end of the game, and that's how we're going to win this team. How are you enjoying your first home game at Maryville? I love it. These fans are awesome. This is, this is perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Todd, you heard, you heard Josh Olson. You heard Josh Olson. You heard, I don't know if my mic's working I right can now. hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, if you can't hear me, you heard Josh Olson <laughs> talk about not only uh, this student fan base, but he mentioned to go into the next period as if the score was 0-0. That is exactly the mentality that not only him, but the rest of this team needs to have with 40 minutes left to play. Yeah, and what, what I like about him saying that is he hasn't even really had a chance to talk or hear Coach Hogan talk to the, the troops yet yeah. in the locker room. So that's a player showing some leadership, showing a good mentality, as you mentioned, to have going into the second period because subconsciously you know that they know what the score is right but you don't want those mistakes to creep in you don't want to get sluggish you don't want to get lax in terms of the fundamentals of the game come out start things fresh it's zero zero as he mentioned and you go from there and then the final score will tell the result over 60 minutes well the shots are 18 to 9 todd 18 to 9 but the score is 7-2 in favor of the saints we still have 40 minutes of hockey left to go in this one, so don't go anywhere. You've been watching the Maryville Saints Hockey Network first intermission report brought to you by Lou Fuse. We'll be back with the second period. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun, too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times and the difficult times. So be sure to seek out help when you need it. We know that here at Maryville, we are never alone. The spirit of Maryville flows through each person that steps foot on our campus. Being a saint is that feeling that Maryville University is your community. That even when you're far away from home, you are home. We're on this journey together. We are Maryville University. One team, one family.
time where it started early. My dad played, so it ran in the family a little bit, and you know, always wanted to play in the NHL. It's, you know, I'm an offensive guy that likes to generate and, and create chances and take big pride in, in the defensive side of things as well. You know, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Warrior. I'm a huge fan of the consistency. It's a year after year for me personally, bring out the best product. And it's so simple and easy to work with Warrior. And on top of that, the service is, is incredible. Always things to learn, always things to go. Always the parts of the game to get better at. But all in all, you have to be a warrior. There's a whole lot of wonder in the little word, why. It's uncovering how things work, what things are. Why is endless. Why is ageless. And it's for everyone to explore. At the St. Louis Science Center, the wonder of why is why we exist. We create it inside our building and in our community. Why is where wonder begins, and the St. Louis Science Center brings it to life. Come visit. Unforgettable moments can happen anytime, anywhere. When we sit down and have a meal, the simplest joys turn into magic. All it takes is good company, great food, and a nice cold Coca-Cola. That's a recipe for magic. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun, too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times and the difficult times. So be sure to seek out help when you need it. We know that here at Maryville, we are never alone. The spirit of Maryville flows through each person that steps foot on our campus. Being a saint is that feeling that Maryville University is your community. That even when you're far away from home, you are home. We're on this journey together. We are Maryville University. One team, one family. It's going to get harder and more difficult, but to never lose that focus of enjoying the game is so important. Leon Dreisaitl from Cologne, Germany, Edmonton Oilers. For me, it started early. My dad played, so it ran in the family a little bit, and you know, always wanted to play in the NHL. You know, I'm an offensive guy that likes to generate and, and create chances and take big pride in, in the defensive side of things as well. You know, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Warrior. I'm a huge fan of the consistency. It's a year after year for me personally, bring out the best product. And it's so simple and easy to work with Warrior. And on top of that, the service is, is incredible. Always things to learn, always things to go, always the parts of the game to get better at, but all in all, you have to be a warrior. 
there's a whole lot of wonder in the little word, why. It's uncovering how things work, what things are. Why is endless. Why is ageless. And it's for everyone to explore. At the St. Louis Science Center, the wonder of why is why we exist. We create it inside our building and in our community. Why is where wonder begins. And the St. Louis Science Center brings it to life. Come visit. Three more goals, made it a 6 nothing game. And in that time frame, Chuck, you left us because you don't like us. McKendry scored two goals, made it a 6-2 game towards the end of that period. However, with 10 seconds remaining on the clock, Cameron Ware made it a 7-2 game. And all is right here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. You know, guys, I didn't expect to see the seven goals put up in the first period. But the way Maryville was playing... For McKendry to get two late ones like that, I wasn't expecting that either. So uh, first period full of uh, of excitement, full of uh, goals. You guys, I mean, I don't know what to expect the rest of this game because McKendry kind of started to turn it on at the end. If the if you if you want to take a look at the bright side, maybe the the players just wanted to give Coach Hogan something to talk about in the locker room, so they they allowed those two goals. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't think they I'm just to do I'm that. spitballing. I don't know. We were making fun of him for being <laughs> negative, so he's, yeah. he has to be positive now. You know. You know so. what? See, You're right. He he might have learned something in the last twenty. <laughs> but it looks but like see, they have an, an ice issue right now. Is Chuck? You were actually you were actually out on the ice. Yeah. Playing games. You were being our MC. You did a fantastic job. When you're not ruining the ice, which is what they're <laughs> they're trying to figure out right now. Well, what uh, it was, my, 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 my golden shoes. You put do. A hole, you have some nice shoes They on. put a hole in the ice. They're so yeah. vibrant out there, you know. Yeah, so. absolutely. Um, not, not sure what's going on here. Uh, probably just a, a hole or something. They're trying to put some snow on it, fill it with some water, rub that puck over it. Just trying to fill in the gap. Um, if you were down there, how would you fix it? How would I fix it? Yeah. I'd be one of the players standing around watching somebody <laughs> else do it. <laughs> Somebody get out the curling broom. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> but that just gives us more time to, to talk some nonsense Yeah. Uh, heading into the second period. But now nah, let's get serious here. Maryville's looked really good so far. We were talking in between the break that this team, although that mindset is still the same from Coach Hogan, you do have new players. And the team, ever since we have gotten into the program, Todd, you've been here the longest. It seems like every single year this team has been building and building, and they just look like a better brand of hockey each and every single year. This might be the best version that we've seen. They look fantastic, especially in this first period. Yeah, the, the skill is off the charts, and as you mentioned, Marshy, it's been that way every single year to where you see it building on top of the last year. But what was so impressive, regardless of the goals, just the first couple shifts of the game, you just saw a team that was already come together like they it reminded me and being in the city that we are this might sound blasphemous but it sound or it reminded me of those Detroit Red Wings teams from the 90s and early 2000s to where just they would throw the puck somewhere and all of a sudden it would be on somebody else's tape yeah they played for the same team it was like they knew exactly where everybody was going to be and the other team was trying to play catch up. Yeah, well, you mean Team Russia when Detroit Reigns. They're essentially <laughs> exactly. they were Team yeah. Russia. I, I mean, was thinking of uh, the 1980 Russian team. Of course, they ended up losing. Well, uh, thank goodness. But uh, that team, though, itself, they had been together for so long right. that they had that style of play where they were so fast. They knew where each other were. And it seems like this team right now, they're finding that chemistry so early on in the season, which is a – it's nice to see being that there are so many new players on right. this roster. Yeah, to, to piggyback off your point, Marshy, for, for the team to get better each year and, and our recruiting classes each year getting better and better, that's exactly what you want to see. That's exactly what Coach Hogan wants to see uh, every year. So 
you're right. I mean, the fact that there's so many new players and they're already clicking, uh, it's a great sign for Maryville Saints. Uh, it's great to see that early so that future, you know, a future roster down the line is going to do the same exact thing, and it's exciting to see what's going to happen the rest of the season. And, and for me, for the rest of this game and then obviously pushing into the rest of the season, it's going to come down to consistency because mm-hmm. we saw definitely last year Maryville at their best could hang with anybody in the country. But it was those second nights out of two, yeah. the, the, the Thursdays transitioning into Fridays, Fridays into Saturdays, where you wouldn't get the same performance night to night. Right now, Maryville's playing better than they did last night, and they won last night. So you want to continue that for the rest of these last 40 minutes, and then going into next weekend and the weekend after that, you want to see that continue to build and just find that that next level to where uh, they're going to find a way to to keep winning games and string a lot of wins together. You're not going to yeah. give those cheap losses that, that add up in the in the column. Well, fans, you see both teams are leaving the ice right now. It's because the second period is already over. I'm just jo- <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, they are trying to fix the ice right now. We'll try and get some information for you, but I'm assuming this might take a long time, being that both teams are exiting the ice right now and heading back to the locker room. Uh, not sure if that will bode well for the fans here who are eager to watch this team score some more goals and watch their favorite team play hockey. Uh, But we'll try and keep you updated as best as we can. We will take a break right now as we have Jeff Crenshaw, our guy. He's heading on the ice to figure out what's going on. So Uh uh, Coach Hogan out there as well. We'll try and figure out what the issue is. But for the time being, stick with us. We're going to head to break. You're watching Maryville Saints Hockey right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Pepe, and I'm excited to show you today Hilt of Apartments. Come with me. We're in Elm. This is one of our five apartment buildings. And right now we're gonna take a look at our four-person apartment. Hey, my name's Drew. Uh, this is our four-bedroom apartment. As we first enter our apartment, we've got the living room. Uh, Maryville provides a couch, coffee table, and this chair. We added some of our own decorations, and they also provide this cable TV hookup. Um, we brought this couch ourselves just to make the room feel more homey. Um, and in our four bedroom apartment, we have one bedroom in the front, three bedrooms in the back that also have two bathrooms. Thanks so much for visiting our apartment. Let's hand it back over to Pepe. Right behind the apartments, we have this nice area where we can have a grill, we can hang out with friends, maybe do some homework. And then we also have a laundry room where we can do our laundry for free. Thank you for touring Hilltop Apartments with me. I hope to see you in campus soon. college hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus. Determination. Strategy and poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. 
hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We believe the ice has been patched. There was a giant divot near the crease, as you might be able to see some of the crew out there working on the ice, trying to patch that divot. Uh, much like when Todd goes golfing and stripes one right on the green, he's got to go and fix his divot. Uh, it looks like <laughs> it might be fixed. The referees are, are opening the door. Let's see what's going on here. So Hogan said, uh, Coach John Hogan's out there uh, running court. He said, put 10 minutes up there. I think they're going to let it freeze. They went over it with the Zamboni, and they're going to let the, the ice that Jeff Crenshaw's out there working on freeze up, and then they're going to try to play uh, a little hockey game. All right. Well, I, I love to see that. They did put the 10 minutes on the clock. Speaking of uh, golf, uh, you know, it was a summer of good weather. And by good weather, I mean humidity that made it feel like it was over 100 degrees. However, still out there on the greens, on the links. Did you get a chance to play, Chuck? I didn't. I didn't get a chance to play. I, I was out in Vegas where it's really hot, Marshy. Yeah. Uh, I got to go out there, but uh, I didn't I Didn't get the links out. Wasn't on the. Uh, wasn't on the course this summer. How about you, Todd? No, I wasn't able to play either. I mean. Ah. Too busy sweating in the heat. Okay. Now you made me look like a liar. <laughs> well, I got to play a few times, okay. and uh, I'm terrible. So we're going to take a break. We'll be back here in about 8 minutes and 30 seconds, give or take. We'll let the ice dry, and hopefully we have a second period of hockey to play right here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Maryville Saints Hockey on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. 
Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times. And the difficult times. So be sure to seek out help when you need it. We know that here at Maryville, we are never alone. The spirit of Maryville flows through each person that steps foot on our campus. Being a Saint is that feeling that Maryville University is your community. That even when you're far away from home, you are home. We're on this journey together. We are Maryville University. One team, one family. It's going to get harder and more difficult, but to never lose that focus of enjoying the game is so important. Leon Dreisaitl from Cologne, Germany, Edmonton Oilers. For me, it started early. My dad played, so it ran in the family a little bit, and you know, I always wanted to play in the NHL. You know, I'm an offensive guy that likes to generate and, and create chances and take big pride in, in the defensive side of things as well. You know, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Warrior and a huge fan of the consistency. It's a year after year for me personally, bring out the best product and it's so simple and easy to work with Warrior. And on top of that, the service is, is incredible. Always things to learn, always things to go. Always the parts of the game to get better at, but all in all, you have to be a warrior. There's a whole lot of wonder in the little word, why. It's uncovering how things work. What things are. Why is endless. Why is ageless. And it's for everyone to explore. At the St. Louis Science Center, the wonder of why is why we exist. We create it inside our building and in our community. Why is where wonder begins, and the St. Louis Science Center brings it to life. Come visit. Unforgettable moments can happen anytime, anywhere. When we sit down and have a meal, the simplest joys into magic. All it takes is good company, great food, and a nice cold Coca-Cola. That's a recipe for magic. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times. 
and the difficult times. So be sure to seek out help when you need it. We know that here at Maryville, we are never alone. The spirit of Maryville flows through each person that steps foot on our campus. Being a saint is that feeling that Maryville University is your community. That even when you're far away from home, you are home. We're on this journey together. We are Maryville University. One team, one family. It's going to get harder and more difficult, but to never lose that focus of enjoying the game is so important. Leon Dreisaitl from Cologne, Germany, Edmonton Oilers. For me, it started early. My dad played, so it ran in the family a little bit, and you know, always wanted to play in the NHL. You know, I'm an offensive guy that likes to generate and, and create chances and take big pride in, in the defensive side of things as well. You know, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Warrior and a huge fan of the consistency. It's a year after year for me personally, bring out the best product and it's so simple and easy to work with Warrior. And on top of that, the service is, is incredible. Always things to learn, always things to go, always the parts of the game to get better at, but all in all, you have to be a warrior. There's a whole lot of wonder in the little word, why. It's uncovering how things work, what things are. Why is endless. Why is ageless. And it's for everyone to explore. At the St. Louis Science Center, the wonder of why is why we exist. We create it inside our building and in our community. Why is where wonder begins, and the St. Louis Science Center brings it to life. Come visit. Unforgettable moments can happen anytime, anywhere. When we sit down and have a meal, the simplest joys into magic. All it takes is good company, great food, and a nice cold Coca-Cola. That's a recipe for magic. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times. And the difficult times. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Finally, we are ready for period number two. We had some ice issues that were fixed thanks to the great crew here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. We had to wait about 10 minutes for the ice to... I wouldn't say freeze, but I think that's what was happening. That's what happened. They were freezing. <laughs> they were freezing the ice. We have Chuck Krause. We have Todd Panula. I'm Andrew Marsh. And we also have the Saints and the Bearcats as period number two is underway. A 7-2 lead for the Saints as they look to tack on more. Already shot on, and that one off the stick 
of TJ Prexler, the new captain for the Maryville Saints. And we'll get a whistle 14 seconds into the second frame. It didn't take them very long to test out that ice. They, they had the puck going right through that area where there was a, a little rut. We're still not really even sure what caused it, but uh, you could definitely see it even from our broadcast position. So hopefully they've got it smoothed out enough to finish the game. That one off the stick of Ben McArthur. It's kept in by the Saints. As they're working for the puck down low. Able to come out with it are the Bearcats. Flipped up, and that one is a little too far, a little too high. However, no icing. McArthur back. Helping him out is Hunter Flores. And we'll get a whistle as that one was shot on from behind the net. 19-17 remaining here in the second period. It feels good to say that we are in the second period, gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> it feels uh, a little bit later than that, but in terms of gameplay, it's only the second period. But when you get uh, nine goals in the first 20 minutes, it's going to take a little bit longer. Face off one by the Saints. White he will drop it back, and the Saints are able to clear it as they go high and hard off the glass. McKendry pushes it forward, and now it's going back the opposite direction. Saints with it. Olsen opens up the hips, looks up. Finds Ursulak, top of the blue line near side. He'll play it back down low. Protre trying to protect the puck is Alexandrov. And now skating with it is Munian Kuye. White back for it. Hits off the body of Olsen. Ursulak with it. Ursulak will go D to D. White looks up, stretch pass, trying to find Zlati. It hits off the skate. Puck is loose just inside the McKendry zone. They'll pick it up. And slowing down the pace of play is Connor Mullins. Oh, it took a funny hop in front. Saints with it. That's Will Smith trying to poke the puck. It comes up top of the blue line. Wrist shot on that one. Stick behind the net. Oh, puck comes right out front. Unable to bang it home, though, are the Saints. As standing right at the doorstep with Sam Edwards. McLeod trying to corral the puck as it bounces off his stick. Now we have the human roller coaster starting here in the stands. One touch pass, looking for Smith in the high slot. And McKendry able to exit the zone. And now the Saints have numbers. Oh, Smith unable to make the pass to McLeod. If he did, him and Prexler were walking right in with a 2 on 0 <laughs> And we get an offsides with 17-41. But my goodness, this crowd is fired up right now, guys. I'm so happy to be back right now here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Just, the, I'm just glad hockey's back, to be honest. Like I said earlier in the broadcast, I've been watching too much baseball this year. Do you see who's uh, leading that roller coaster? I'm going to take a wild guess. Wild guess. I did not see who was. But from previous seasons, the guy that would lead something like that not at the D1 games, but at the D2 games <laughs> and at the women's games would be the former captain, Jack Harrison. Correct. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. Love, we have to, a winner. love to see him here. Finding ways to keep that leadership going, even though he's uh, no longer playing. Puck squirts loose. McKendry able to exit the zone. Big hit at the blue line. Ben McArthur steps up and says, thanks for coming. We get a whistle with 17.02 remaining here in the second period as Ed Coffey puts a glove on the puck. Still a 7-2 lead for the Saints. And that's kind of what we were talking about, Marshy, in the intermission. Keeping that energy up, keeping the fundamentals there. And MacArthur stepping up, making that hit. Rubbing a little bit of salt in the wound after Harris went down too. Mm -hmm. So he, you're still playing that rivalry game regardless of what the score is. Well, and you heard in the intermission as McKendry wins it, shot on. That one off his skate and just wide of the net. You heard Josh Olson talking about even though they're up 7-2, this is a 0-0 game for Maryville, and they're playing so far like it is 0-0, trying to score early in this frame as they have a two-on-one shot. Oh, and that one goes oh, oh. just wide. Ursulak stepped up in the play. The pass from Lucas Adams, another shot. That one wide of the cage and able to put a glove on it is the netminder for McKendry and Weiss. 17 or 16.33 remaining here in the second period. 
Shots are 20 to 11 in favor of Maryville, and of course they still lead by five. Yeah, Ursulak a little bit upset with himself on the initial shot. He just cut it back across the green a little too much, and, and then he came into the slot, a defenseman activating that much that he was in between the hash marks, but never got the puck and another opportunity. Faceoff was won by McKendry. They rimmed it around the boards, and an icing has been called. So we'll do it again, 16-26 remaining here in the second period. If you're just now joining us, Maryville with a commanding lead in the first period. They jumped out to a 6-0 lead before the Bearcats could respond. But with 10 seconds left in the first period, Cameron Ware was able to make it a 7-2 game. As there's a shot from the blue line, another stop made, as we'll get another whistle. 16-21 now remaining here in the second period. And that's a really difficult save for Weiss to make. The puck is coming through the wickets, through the trees, if you will. He's got no idea where it goes after it gets deflected off of somebody in front. But he managed to have good positioning to keep Maryville off the board. DJ Prexler, after the faceoff win, grabs it, throws it up top to Jackson White. White gets it, top of the key, shot, hit off a stick, able to corral it as TJ Prexler. Finds his brother in Timon. Timon, wrist shot. Pardon me, that is Brett Ursulak. These 43s and 47s are confusing me, Todd. Numbers for McKendry. Shot, stop made, rebounds loose. And there's a nice stick lift by Flores. Flores driving the net. And that one goes off a stick. Ursulak with it, top of the blue line. Finds White, White over, shot. Oh, what a save made. Lucas Adams looking for his second goal of the game, and he's denied. Zlotti's back with it at his own blue line. He'll go D to D, although Zlotti is a forward, so forward to D. Ursulak was the intended target. He picked it up, and now Garrett Hunter finds it. TJ Prexler pushes it forward, has it at the dot. Wrist shot on, stop made. Puck is loose in front, now squirts to the side of the cage behind the net now. Rimmed up top to the blue line. Shot on, doesn't make its way through. It's kept in by Timon. Timon. To his brother TJ. TJ at the oh, dot, oh. and that one goes just wide. Good pressure. Hunter with it. Fires it to the other side of the ice. Timon throws one on net as Lottie's in front of the net. And it's cleared. Arm is up by the linesman. It will be an icing. With 14.53 left to go here in the second frame, it's still a 7 to 2 game. But the Saints are looking to tack on more. Yeah, and they're putting the pressure on. They're, they're getting in transition really fast. We saw a little flurry of activity. Coffee made a save a few moments ago. The puck was just kind of sitting there here on the near circle, and then boom like that, it's down the ice with Maryville and a three-on-two. <laughs> boom like that. I love it, Todd. <laughs> Slap shot from Timon. It goes well wide of the cage. It's flipped up in the neutral zone. Timon will corral it just inside of his own zone. Fires it. Olsen with it. Olsen, top of the circle, loses it. Shot on it, hit off the side of the net and bounces wide of the cage. McKendry able to pick up the puck and head out of the zone as Alexandrov pushes it forward. Hunter and Alexandrov battle for the puck behind the net. Helping him out is Timon Prexler. A shot from a weird angle goes off a body and now Maryville will take the puck out of their zone as they hit the McKendry blue line. However, they go off sides with 14-12 left to go here in the second period. 24 shots in favor of of Maryville. They lead that department 24 to 12. Yeah, two to one advantage in the shots and it almost doesn't even feel like McKendry has had that many. I was kind of surprised that they ended up with nine shots by the end of the first period. Only three here in the second period, almost six minutes played. And Maryville had three goals already in this game before McKendry even found themselves on the scoreboard in terms of shots. As there's a pass out front, McLeod, ooh, takes a big hit trying to find the puck. The Bearcats able to come out with it. Skating up ice is Munyan Kuye. Back for the puck for the Saints. Ooh. Was Rutkai shot on. Save made by Ed Coffey, 13-36. Left to go here in the second period. The Saints right now still doing the little things that you need to do. Defensively, they're allowing Coffey to see the shots that he's facing. And offensively, 
even though they don't necessarily have a guy that's just planting himself old school style in front of the net, they're making those quick passes in front of the net with their skating mm-hmm. so that there's still constantly a screen in front of the opposing goaltender. Foot, foot race. Oh, Jake Charche blows a tire. And now the Bearcats, three on one. Top of the circle, shot on, stop made by Coffey. Rebound, it goes just wide of the net. Puck pushed forward, it comes out of the zone, sent back in. Ursulak with it at the dot, Ooh. tries the cross ice pass. It hit off a stick, but it makes its way to the intended target in Cameron Ware. We'll get a whistle, 13 minutes on the dot. Left to go here in this one, in this period, I should say. So we're seven minutes into the second period. No goals have been scored. We could not say the same thing in the last period. Yeah, you know, Marsh, they they had about a half-hour break between the first and second, so it uh, kind of gave Maryville a chance to to kind of cool off a little bit. Like you said, it's no goals yet. We couldn't say that in the first period. Puck kept inside the zone, a slap shot that goes into the corner, so we'll call it a cross-corner dump in. It's rimmed around near side corner now. Up top of the blue line, White to Ursulak. Couldn't get the shot off, it was blocked. And the Bearcats able to skate inside the Saints zone. However, they lose control of the puck, and the Saints are going the other way. Far side red line, Ursulak with it. Blue line trying to dance around the defender, still with it. Puck is loose, goes up top to the blue line, White with it, wrist shot on. It goes wide of the far side post. Back down low, Lucas Adams. Adams surveys the ice, spins around behind the cage. It's poked at, stepping up is Jackson White, able to keep it in. White fires one on, that goes under the pad, but we get a stop with 12.05 left to go in the second. Kind of a fancy little bounce here. You're not sure if that was gonna go in, the goaltender Wasn't quite sure where it was, but it was up in the paraphernalia. Yeah, that was a really awkward save by Weiss because initially, based on his stick movement, it looked like he was trying to sweep it into the far side corner, missed it, still got it in between the legs, though. Face-off won by the Bearcats. Looking to make the breakout pass was Connor Mullins. However, hit off the boards, and now the Saints will take possession inside their own zone. At the hash mark, skating up ice, Zlotti. Slotty finds McArthur to Olsen. Olsen pushes it forward. Jack Henderson with it. Stops and starts. Looks up. Fires one on. That one goes just wide of the net, and it rims around. Olsen there at the blue line. Couldn't keep it in. Corpse with it. Far side. Henderson. In the corner. Backhanded pass. It's intercepted in the low slot, and that one will be flicked up into... The rafters, and we'll get a whistle with 11-24. So still pretty prominent on the shots, guys. 15 shots for McKendry, 25 up on the board for Maryville, and it has been in the McKendry zone, as we saw in the first period. But those are, we always say this, it's kind of dangerous because, the you know, Ed Coffey's not facing a lot of shots, so he gets kind of cold down there. Saints with it. Wrist shot, ooh, goes off a body and wide of the net. Saints looking to cycle, McLeod with it in the corner. Near side hash marks. Puck battle, it squirts up top of the blue line, it's kept in by the Saints. Puck is bouncing all around, however the Saints do maintain possession of it. Time in Prexler to Hunter. Hunter thought about shooting, elects not to, keeps it, back to Timon. Timon will send it back down low. Sam Edwards on the puck now. Finds Smith. Smith. Hunter. Shot. Oh, what a save. A good challenge by Weiss. Makes the stop with 10.45 left to go here in the second period. Took the words right out of my mouth. Weiss came out out of his crease facing that shot, and he was able to snag it up. Black and yellow, black and yellow, right? Oh, wrong colors. That's actually red and black. That's true. Uh, but I think Todd is colorblind. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> I don't see him black and white, though. I see certain shades. 
certain shades. That explains your suit op uh, colors there, Todd. My suit looks fine. Well, Todd's <laughs> got about 50 shades of gray right now on his suit. <laughs> And that's not a joke. He actually has a ton of different colors of gray. We can't all wear the fashionable red like Chuck. I mean, Chuck, you do a great job at representing Maryville as that one's gloved down and McKendry able to exit the zone. He'll flip it in, a cross-corner dump in. It's bouncing like a bouncy ball. And Tymon Prexler will spin and make the DDD pass to Hunter. Hunter off the glass. It's kept in. He'll get it back at the hash marks. As he's pinned up against the boards. Able to get the puck and give support is Campbell McLean. However, it's sent back down as it was at the top of the blue line. Where with it? Funnels it forward. McLean unable to corral the pass. It hit right off his skate. Stretch pass. That one goes off the stick. Good hand-eye coordination right there from Jack Harris. Not to be confused with Jack Harrison. No, not at all. Captain of the Maryville Saints. Off the glass, into the neutral zone. D to D for the Bearcats. Uh-oh. That door's Close open. Close that door, please. Time in with it at the red line. Dumps it in. In on the forecheck is TJ. Sent around to the near side half wall. That pass intended for Lucas Adams is intercepted as McKendry will dump it in. Ed Coffey comes out of the cage. He'll throw it around the near side wall. It's bouncing right at the blue line. McKendry able to keep it in. Adams with it. Plays it back to the far side corner. Ursulak throws it back the other way. White shovels it forward on the backhand. Ursulak gets his pocket picked. However, he gets it back. And now Lucas Adams with the puck. It gets slapped away. Adams trying to dance his way around the defenders. He pushes, oh, that's a late call. <laughs> that's a late call. And it looked like Lucas Adams just gave him a shove and he fell down, but what can you do here, guys? Lucas Adams was behind him. He said, cheers, and he went down to the ice. Um, I, they're calling it a hook. Not a, not a good call. I, I, he, it looks like, like you said, it looks like he just pushed him from behind. Um, however, you know, that's the game of hockey. Calls are going, to, are going to go your way. Some calls are not going to go your way, regardless. The Saints will have to kill a penalty for two minutes as they lead 7-2 with 8.22 remaining here in the second period. A good opportunity for us to see Maryville's penalty kill here, guys. Absolutely. We're looking at the positives unlike Todd. <laughs> hey, when I got a little bit surly there, they all of a sudden turned it back on and scored hey, some goals. Maybe so. we'll see a, a shorthanded goal here <laughs> as McKendry sets up their power play. A bouncing puck. Brayshirt, who has a goal, was able to keep that one in. At the blue line now, Trevor Voida, same thing. Ooh, that one could now have been that a penalty. Was a, that was a trip right, right there. You know what? We'll call that one a penalty, and now they have to kill off 90 seconds. 30 seconds have gone by in the minor to Lucas Adams for hooking. 7.40 left here in the second period. Is Trevor Voida making some moves, the big defenseman. That one is cleared, though, by the Saints. And so they have killed 50 seconds off the clock. Still a minute 10 left to go on the power play for McKendry. Charche battling for it. Near side corner. Garrett Hunter helping him out. Will Smith surveying the scrum. And now he's in on it as well. Three Bearcats, three Saints. Jackson White finds the puck. He'll take it with some time and space, and he'll fire one off the boards. It does come out of the zone, but does not go the length of the ice. Charche pounding the puck. It's sent back in. Ed Coffey will stop it. Jackson White fires it down the length of the ice, and it does go all the way 200 feet this time. Less than 30 seconds remaining on the power play for the Bearcats. Rimmed around the boards. It goes under the stick of T.J. Prexler. Trying to poke it forward at the McKendry blue line. Shot on, save made. That was Campbell McLean. Thought he might have had a shorthanded opportunity. So 10 seconds remaining on the Lucas Adams hooking minor. 6.32 left to go here in the second period. 7-2, still the score. We have had no goals in the second period, although we had nine in the first period. Uh, we can blame the ice. We'll just blame the ice. Although there's 
you know, I don't know the circumference or the square footage of the ice. I'd have to look that up on Google. But, <laughs> you know. That's a new site I heard about. Is there a new website? No. HockeyRinkSquareFoot.com? <laughs> So the Saints are back to five-on-five five hockey as they kill the penalty. T.J. Prexler with it. Finds Lucas Adams. Adams at the blue line. Corpse stepping up in front. Shot on. Oh, what a pad save made. Puck is still loose. T.J. with it. Up top to Ben McArthur. TJ gets it back, top of the circle, down low, looking for that one-touch pass to Lucas Adams. It hits off a stick and goes out of play with 5.51 remaining here in the second period. Yeah, that was a great save, like you said, Marshy. Lucas Adams held on to it a little, little longer, which he should have, but the pad was there, keeping it out, making it a, still a five-goal game at 7-2. So face-off coming to the glove side, or the blocker side of Weiss. McKendry wins the faceoff. It goes off the glass, unable to keep it in. It was Ursulak. Good back check by Olsen, able to take his man out of the play. Now the Saints are going the other way. Olsen with it. Olsen, backhanded sauce shot on net. Save is made. And getting bumped driving the net was Jackson Zlotti. Whistle blown, 5.32 remaining here. The Saints are one shot away from hitting the 30-shot mark. Last night they had 48 shots on net. We'll see if they can equal that tally tonight, or maybe they'll go over. Shot wide, off the faceoff. Zlotti up top to the blue line. Ursulak near side, stops, shoots, hits off the stick, and bounces wide of the net. In the corner, both teams battling for a puck. Big hit by Jackson Zlotti. He's working for it. The physicality of this team is definitely showing tonight. They can keep this up all season long. They will be a tough team to play against, not only from a skill standpoint, but from a physicality standpoint as well, Todd. Yeah, they're, they're big, they're strong, they're fast. I mean, they got the trifecta in those aspects. So, and then that's going to become even more key when you start playing some of the bigger teams. Not necessarily just in terms of the rankings, but, but other teams that can match you for size. Sam Edwards with a sauce pass on the backhand for White. White's intended pass to Will Smith is a no-go. We have a whistle. Offsides is the call. 434 left to go here in the second period. Stick with us for our intermission report brought to you by Lou Fuse. We'll break down the second period. I'm sure it'll be a little bit different than the first intermission. But we still have some time left to go on the clock, so anything can happen. We saw that at the end of the first period, guys. A lot of goals were scored. Yeah, who's being negative now? I'm just simply stating, <laughs> you know what? I'll take that one. I'll take it. I'll admit it. Shot wide, and that one hit off the backside of the net. Trying to slap one on was time in Prexler. He whiffed on it. Pass out front, Luke McLeod unable to get the shot off. He's battling for the puck. It's been all Saints here in this one tonight. 7-2 as they lead here late in the second period as there's a shot on net. Coffee will put a glove on it as we get a whistle with 4.06 remaining here in the second frame. You mentioned it earlier about the amount of shots that McKendry has. It doesn't seem like they have 17 shots on net, but... No. You get one like that, you throw it on, you get a whistle, get some fresh guys out there, right. perhaps, and get an offensive zone face-off. However, McKendry has not capitalized on these offensive zone draws. And that's been key for Maryville. Uh, obviously, any team at any level, depth down the middle is, is uh, how you win championships that's when the st louis blues won they had some really good centers they had guys on the wings that could fill in as centers and right now maryville is showcasing that with some big wins on the faceoff dot in their own zone and then they transition to the offensive end lucas adams protecting the puck up top of the blue line time and prexler with it finds his brother in tj tj over to garrett hunter he'll work he'll work his way down low 
Lucas Adams trying to drag it in and shoot one on. He couldn't get the shot off. Puck comes out of the zone, and Tymon will fire it back towards Lucas Adams at the blue line. Looking wide. TJ, back door. Oh, oh, looking for the one touch. Adams drags it, shoots. Oh, what a save. He looked like he took a stick up high. No call. No, there is a call. They're going to head to the power play. Shot on. Weiss makes the save. Rebound. It is loose. Oh, it bounces right off a stick and over the net. And we'll get a whistle, and the Saints will head to the power play. I was wondering where the call was coming from. It, it, it seemed like no arm went up. Maybe maybe I'm just not looking. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I saw Ed Coffey darting towards the bench. I knew immediately that. Well, he's maybe going for a skate. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe they're pulling the goalie. Who knows? But that is not the case as the Saints will head to the power play once again. I, I guess the officials are just kind of wanting to replay the, the play in their head before they decide. Because yeah, no, for sure. We saw, we saw that on the, the McHenry power play to where I literally looked at the referee that was in the corner. Yeah. Then I looked at the other one. Nobody had put their arm up. And then all of a sudden there was a penalty called. Uh, more Kind of so. similar here. And there's a shot from Josh Olsen. Whistle blown. 3-0-3. Good music group back in the day. Left to go in the second period. 152 now remaining on the Maryville power play. Saints one for three with the man advantage so far tonight. We'll see if they can. They're uh, two for three. Math is hard. It is. It really <laughs> is. Down low. That puck sweeps right under the stick of Tymon Prexler. He's able to find Ursulak. Ursulak back down low. It takes a funny hop and rims around to the near side corner. Puck below the dots, and it hits off the side of the net. Maybe hit off a stick. Either way, Weiss is able to put a glove on it, and we'll get a whistle as 32 seconds have come off the clock on the McKendree Minor. Maryville still leading 7-2. As Todd mentioned, they're two for three on the power play. Two minutes, 39 seconds remaining here in this period. Trying to go up by six. Face off one by the Bearcats. They'll rim it around the boards as it travels the length of the ice. Jackson White will go back for it. Lucas Adams will peel off. White feeds it back for Zlotti. Zlotti finds TJ Prexler. Prexler hits the end. Smith with it. He'll drop it back for White as the Saints set up their power play. Oh, watch out, Coach Hogan. That one goes out of play, hit off the stick. And we'll get a whistle. He doesn't need all those teeth. It looked like it almost hit Toppy and not head coach John Hogan. And honestly, it didn't even look like Coach Hogan even flinched. Yeah, he was already yelling at somebody on the ice. Probably telling him to catch the pass. <laughs> Probably. I like to keep my chicklets. Here's Jackson Zlotti. Works his way into the zone. He loses his handle of the puck, but he has a few teammates to help him out. Jackson White over to Adams. Adams back to White. Top of the key. Back to Adams. Adams looking for that one-touch pass to Will Smith. It hits off his stick. However, the Saints maintain possession. Near side circle. Zlotti. Far side circle. Adams. Can't get the shot through. Could have been a pass. Either way, it's out of the zone. Adams gets it back at the blue line. He'll slow down, finds Zlotti. Zlotti, top of the circle. Looks, 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 shoots, scores! Jackson Zlotti on the power play with 127 remaining in the second period. Makes it an 8-2 game. This Maryville power play has come out tonight in full force. They have been dominate. Dominant with the man advantage. The patience right there of Zlotti, as you said, Marcy, he waited, he waited, and then he waited again, and finally he took the shot. And he basically outweighed the goaltender because it looked Weiss, like he moved. Yeah, I think Weiss by that by that point was expecting a pass. So he left that near side open. There was a little bit of a screen coming from his own defender. I think Weiss thought maybe his own defender was gonna get the block. Didn't happen. Well placed shot by Zlotti. And we've got eight on the board. Breakaway opportunity, and that one goes by the wayside for Jack Henderson. Henderson with it. Cycles down low. Poking at the puck is Olsen. Olsen with two goals tonight. 
searching for a hat trick in his first home game here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. As we have less than a minute to go here in the second frame, Maryville leading 8-2. to two. As that one goes out of play, 44.6 seconds remaining left to go here in this period. Most of our focus has been, obviously, everything that's been on the ice. But something did just occur to me that uh, is also impressive in terms of the start of this season. We can actually understand the PA announcer. <laughs> I, you know what? I didn't even think about that. Uh, everybody here at the Maryville University Hockey Center, they do a fine job. And PA is a crucial part. And the, and the this, Saints have one of the game. best PA guys in the business. Absolutely. But unfortunately, they've had some technical issues the last couple seasons, so it sounded kind of like the, the adults from the Charlie Brown cartoons. Less than 30 remaining here in the second period. A ton of fans here in support of the Saints. It was a blackout. There was a, a grill. I, I believe it was a, like a pregame party outside of the arena and we get a whistle with 22 seconds remaining here in the second just a ton of fans it's good to see that everyone's back here in full force rooting on the saints face off one by maryville wrist shot stop made by weiss 15 seconds remaining battle behind the net tj prexler on the backhand up top to the blue line colt corpse with it couldn't get enough mustard on the shot, but it stays in the zone. Smith pushes it forward. Five seconds remaining in the period. It doesn't look like they're going to get a shot off as McKendry will let the clock run down, and that'll do it. 40 minutes have gone by here in this one. The Saints led 7-2 after one period of play. Only one goal scored in this period. And that belongs to Jackson Slotty, who made it 8-2. to two. We'll dive more into this second period in our intermission report, so don't go anywhere. The Saints are on top of the McKendry Bearcats. We'll be right back with more Maryville Saints hockey right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation. Home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun too. We have a passion to see each other succeed. You might have a few hiccups along the way. Or maybe something more serious. When we run into adversity, we have faculty and staff here to provide support. We stand with our fellow Saints through the good times. And the difficult times. So be sure to seek out help when you need it. We know that here at Maryville, we are never alone. The spirit of Maryville flows through each person that steps foot on our campus. Being a Saint is that feeling that Maryville University is your community. That even when you're far away from home, you are home. We're on this journey together. We are Maryville University. One team, one family. It's going to get harder and more difficult. 
but to never lose that focus of enjoying the game is so important. Me on dry Seidel from Cologne, Germany, Edmonton Oilers. For me, it started early. My dad played, so it ran in the family a little bit, and you know, always wanted to play in the NHL. You know, I'm an offensive guy that likes to generate and, and create chances and take big pride in, in the defensive side of things as well. You know, I've got nothing, nothing but great things to say about Warrior and a huge fan of the consistency. It's a year after year for me personally, bring out the best product and it's so simple and easy to work with Warrior. And on top of that, the service is, is incredible. Always things to learn, always things to go, always the parts of the game to get better at, but all in all, you have to be a warrior. There's a whole lot of wonder in the little word, why. It's uncovering how things work, what things are. Why is endless. Why is ageless. And it's for everyone to explore. At the St. Louis Science Center, the wonder of why is why we exist. We create it inside our building and in our community. Why is where wonder begins, and the St. Louis Science Center brings it to life. Come visit. Unforgettable moments can happen anytime, anywhere. When we sit down and have a meal, the simplest joys turn into magic. All it takes is good company, great food, and a nice cold Coca-Cola. That's a recipe for magic. Welcome to Maryville University. Welcome to Saints Nation, home of the Big Red M. So what does it mean to be a Maryville Saint? It's more than just going to classes. As Saints, we are passionate about what we believe in. We are open-minded and curious about other points of view. And we know this about life at Maryville. Your best experiences will happen when you get involved. Make sure to get involved on campus. We work hard. But we have a lot of fun too. Welcome back to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. It's time for the Lou Fuse Intermission Report. Todd Panula, I'm Andrew Marsh, and we have ourselves an 8-2 game between the Maryville Saints and the McKendree Bearcats. Todd, not a lot of scoring in that second period. Just one goal thanks to Jackson Zlotti on the power play. Yeah, and keeping the power play red hot, we mentioned it. They went into that power play two for three. Now they're three for four. Let's see, my math is improving there a little bit. <laughs> But uh, Maryville hasn't really needed a whole lot of improving. They had the seven goals in the first period. They get one more, and all of a sudden it's 8-2. to two. They keep uh, the, the, the zero on the board with that mentality yeah. that they went into that first intermission with. Pretend it's 0-0 zero, zero going into that period. You won another period. It's one to nothing after that period, 8-2 to two overall. And we talked about it during that period. The, the shot totals went up for McKendry, but you yeah. didn't really feel like they were getting anything out of it. They really didn't challenge Ed Coffey that much. The defense really did their job in terms of keeping the shots away and letting their goaltenders see the ones that they get through. Yeah, there was about a 30-minute wait, give or take, because of the ice in between the first and the second period. We heard Lydia Manning, our ringside reporter, talk to Josh Olson in that first period. He described... This game needs to be a 0-0 game after leading 7-2 in the first period. Jackson Zlotti with the lone goal in the second. And speaking of Jackson Zlotti, Lydia Manning, our ringside reporter, is down by the locker rooms to talk with the lone goal scorer in the second period. I'm here with number 15, Jackson Zlotti. Jackson, you just scored your second goal of the game. Walk us through that. Uh, you know, it was a good regroup from Whitey. Uh, he made a good pass to uh, Lucas Adams, and he was able to find me on the break-in, and uh, just was lucky and found a corner. It's the home opener for your team. How does it feel to be playing in front of this Maryville crowd? Uh, this is always a really fun game to play. You know, it's, uh, the crowd's great. Everyone brings the energy, and we really feed off it as a team, so it's a lot of fun. The scoring went from nine goals in the first period to just one in the second. How do you get that momentum back? Uh, I think we just got to get back to our game, get the puck deep, you know, pucks, pucks, pucks to the net and get bodies to the net, keep it simple, and uh, just execute our plays. Thanks, Jackson. Well, you heard Jackson's Zlotti down by the locker room. He said, keep the game simple, 
stick to their game. They have 20 minutes of, uh, of play left to go here in this one, up by six goals. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. Stick to your game and, and, and keep the, the fundamentals the same because you don't want to sort of get out of your game heading into the next series. Right, and the fundamentals, that's exactly the word that I was going to use. So we've kind of done it to each other. Chuck has done it a little bit. We've been stealing each other's words out of our mouths. But Have it's we? a good word. Uh, to use because that's what they need to do yeah. is keep everything simplified and, and not try to get cute with everything. Obviously, you, you get a big lead. You're up by six going into the final period of play. The the tendency a lot of times is to to want to try to go for that fancy little play or the, the nifty pass or, or get some guys padded stats. I say don't do that. Obviously, if you have an opportunity to score a goal, go for it. But you don't need more goals. You need to necessarily keep them off the board. And as you said, keep everything clean and and uh, basically playing the kind of hockey you want to be playing going into next weekend. Yeah, you're taking on Illinois State, a team that you know was pretty tough on you last season. Then you have Midland, and then you take on UCO, which will be the first real litmus test for uh, this squad. Speaking of taking words from uh, each other. Uh, Todd, that's your word. <laughs> that uh, one's going to haunt me forever, Absolutely, I think. and I had to take it. I had to jump <laughs> on uh, what you were saying. So we have an 8-2 game here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. 20 minutes left to play here in this one. It's been a fun night so far here in Chesterfield, Missouri. We have 20 more minutes left to go. So stick around. Third period coming your way soon right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. I'm Pepe, and I'm excited to show you today Hilt of Apartments. Come with me. We're in Elm. This is one of our five apartment buildings. And right now, we're going to take a look at our four-person apartment. Hey, my name's Drew. Uh, this is our four-bedroom apartment. As we first enter our apartment, we've got the living room. Uh, Maryville provides a couch, coffee table, and this chair. We added some of our own decorations, and they also provide this cable TV hookup. Um, we brought this couch ourselves just to make the room feel more homey. Um, and then we'll go check out the bedrooms. In our four bedroom apartment, we have one bedroom in the front, three bedrooms in the back that also have two bathrooms. Thanks so much for visiting our apartment. Let's hand it back over to Pepe. Right behind the apartments, we have this nice area where we can have a grill, we can hang out with friends, maybe do some homework. And then we also have a laundry room where we can do our laundry for free. Thank you for touring Hilltop Apartments with me. I hope to see you in campus soon. college hockey. It's more than just what school you play for. More than just another sweater you pull on. It's about focus. Determination. Strategy and poise. It's more than just packed rinks and screaming fans. It's about heart, skill, and passion. In nearly 30 years of the ACHA, we don't just play the game of hockey. We are the game of hockey. Hundreds of elite players and coaches from some of the United States and Canada's most prestigious programs. The American Collegiate Hockey Association. More than just a game. This is the letter I've been telling you about. 
This letter is for you. From what I hear, you're supposed to be the next Tom Brady. What I'm about to say is important. Never let them call you the next Tom Brady. When they compare you to the goats, tune it out. When they say you're a sixth round draft pick, store it away. Compare yourself to nobody but the kid in the mirror. The one who goes all in, all out, and has the crazy confidence to know that who you are today is just a piece of who you're going to become. This letter's for that you, the one no one will see coming. Sincerely, Tom. I'm Pepe, and I'm excited to show you today Hilt of Apartments. Come with me. We're in Elm. This is one of our five apartment buildings. And right now we're gonna take a look at our four-person apartment. Hey, my name's Drew. Uh, this is our four-bedroom apartment. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. We're getting ready for period number three between the McKendree Bearcats and your Maryville Saints. An 8-2 lead right now for the Saints heading into the final frame. We have Chuck Krause, Todd Panula, and myself, Andrew Marsh, ready to go for this final period of hockey, the home opener for the Saints. And the Saints will take the ice. Guys, what are you looking forward to in this third period? I know the score is a little lopsided, but still a lot of good hockey to watch here in the remaining minutes of this game. We kind of touched on it during the intermission. Uh, you don't want to change your game up too much. You want to simplify everything. I'd like to see what we saw more in the second period, a little bit more of a physical style for Maryville. Put the body on the body of your opponent. Really kind of take McKendry mentally out of it. Uh, if you get an opportunity to put another goal in, you take that, but you don't necessarily go looking strictly for goals late in the game. Chuck, what are your thoughts? I mean, <laughs> how do you disagree when Todd says something? If he's not negative, everything Todd says is usually pretty spot on. Yeah, no, I agree. See, that we're, why can't I get that mentality out of the hockey rink? I, I leave here and everybody doesn't pay attention to what I say. <laughs> no, we're taking notes, Todd. Period three underway here at the Maryville University Hockey Center. An 8-2 lead for the Saints. And we have a quick whistle, 10 seconds into the final period. Face off one by Maryville. MacArthur finds Prexler. However, it hops over a stick. So a little battle, a little board battle going on at the red line. And Lucas Adams able to pick it up. Inside the neutral zone. McKendry with it. Able to dump it in. Well, slightly. For the Bearcats. A hit off a of body. And now the Saints with it. Lucas Adams down low. Puck far side. Adams with it. Adams stops. Loses the puck. Able to grab it for McKendry and get it out of the zone is Kyle Munyan Kuye. I agree. <laughs> Stretch pass off the off the boards. Chip forward. Foot race. Taking the hit, but making the play is Jack Henderson. Puck comes out front. Henderson with it. Tries to chip it forward for Zlotti who's a goal away from a hat-trick. Josh Olsen, also a goal away from a hat-trick. 
Errant pass out front, shot on, goes off his stick and over the net. Sam Edwards sitting out a potential hat trick. Lots of hat trick opportunities. Here's Lottie. Loses his handle of the puck at the blue line. He'll touch it, and we'll get an offsides call with 18-18 left to go here in the third period. 35 shots for the Saints, 17 for the Bearcats. You guys, want to give a little congratulations is in is in store. Our social media and oh. graphics and everything. Haley Baker, she, Marshy, yeah, got a job at the Detroit Red Wings, and That's awesome. this is her last game, and she's heading up to Detroit on Thursday. So. She graduated from Maryville, got a degree, and she is now on with the Detroit Wettering. So congratulations to Haley. That is awesome. Happy for her, but uh, now I have to hate her. <laughs> oh, my no, goodness, no, no. Todd. Hey, I, Todd, what the hell? Go. You were just complimenting the Detroit Red Wings they, yes, not they, too they, long they, ago. Of their style of play, that doesn't mean that I like them, and I never will. Come on, man. But we love Haley, so we do. that's great for her. Congratulations to Haley. I hope she covers a losing team. <laughs> oh, Good come night. On. Can you just knock it off, please? <laughs> Whistle, 1745, another offsides call. Todd, thank you for your service. You've been relieved. <laughs> Good, I can go home and go to bed. <laughs> it is past your bedtime. Well, actually, it will be in about one minute. 944 is the local time here. Okay. He goes to bed at 9.45, so that makes that, sense. I know. That's why That's why he brought his pillow, just in case <laughs> there was a stoppage due to a chunk of the ice being missing. he got to plan ahead. Absolutely. Dumped in by Colt Corpse. And on the four check is Cameron Ware. He intercepts the puck. Corpse pinches in. Charche with it. Charche drops it to Ware. Ware, near side corner. Fighting for the puck are the Bearcats. They lose it. That is the Saints. Able to get it in is Trevor Voida. Charche took the hit but kept on going. Maryville with it. Able to get it in for the Saints. Is Campbell McLean. That one's flipped up in the neutral zone. TJ Prexler with it with Lucas Adams. Prexler, Adams, Adams in. Adams oh, shoots. Oh, 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 what a silky goal. He goes top shelf right over the glove. Makes it a 9 2 game with 16 38 remaining here in the third period. Another goal for Lucas Adams. That's his fourth of the season, his second tonight. I want to say it's a bottle popper, but. It did hit the bottom, but the bottle stayed on the top of the goal. But what a shot by Lucas Adams coming down the far side. It's a tough bottle down there. It's a tough bottle down there, Todd. You're right. So now we have another person sitting on a hat trick with Adams picking up his second goal. And Who will be the first to get the hat trick? Shot on the Lucas scores! Adams! It's Lucas Adams once again! Toss your hats if you can make it over this screen. 16-24 remaining in the third period. Lucas Adams gets the hat trick, his fifth goal of the year. And the Saints are leading by a ton right now. He had an eight-goal lead, 16 and a half minutes still left in this third period, guys. You gotta think that the Hogan brothers are happy with the way the team is playing. A 10-2 lead for the Saints. Not even five minutes into the third period, so they are not letting off the gas by any means. Last night was a 4-3 victory for the Saints. This one a little bit different. And now they have numbers. Lucas Adams once again with TJ Prexler. Drops the puck, however it's intercepted by Trevor Voida. And now it's turned over. Prexler with it, trying to make a move. He gets knocked off the puck, goes down, and we'll get a whistle. 15.58 left to go here in regulation as we have crossed the threshold. Good goodbye and good night, Todd. 9.47 local He's still time. going strong. He's still going, folks. That's how committed he is to the program. They, 
But talking about the differences in the two nights, you, you kind of wonder how much of that boils down to some of the ancillary uh, things surrounding the game because last night, obviously, McKendry, they had their goaltender standing on his head. It's their home opener. They want to play well in front of their fans. Yeah, uh, They sure. did so. Maryville just got on top of them. You turn around 24 hours later, Maryville wants to do so for their fans. They come out red hot, six goals in under 10 minutes in the first period. And, and never really took their foot off the gas after that. And that is something to look towards in the season, and you can take a lot from this performance. Yes, you could have scored and basically sat back the rest of the night with a six-goal lead early in the first period. However, once McKendry started getting a little bit of momentum late there in the first period to try and make their way back in this game as that puck goes out of play with 15-13 left to go here in the third. Once they started to get that momentum, even if it was for like a minute, right? They Maryville said, no, 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 no. That's We're not dealing with that tonight. They end up getting the late goal in the first period, and it's been Maryville ever since. Yeah, it really I, has. I think you play a full 60 here, I think Maryville's dominated about 58 or 59 minutes of it. And you, you talked about that at the end of the first period. Statistically, Edwards' goal is going to be a, a throwaway, but it was big at the time because it stemmed the bleeding. You don't allow McKendry to build any more momentum. Uh, you don't allow them to feel good about themselves going into the intermission because if you don't score that goal, all of a sudden you get in their locker room and it's like hey okay we finished the last couple minutes of the period pretty well let's build on that instead you put another one in the back of their net you completely snuff out any positivity that they might have had yeah and you're absolutely right Todd because I was down by the by the McKendry bench at the end of the first and, and coach Gary Henson that's that's what he was telling his guys He's like that's two let's go let's keep going let's keep going and Maryville like Marshy said just shut that down Luke McLeod finds Will Smith, crosses the blue line. Another offsides call with 14.51 left to go here in the third. Maryville close to their total of shots from last night's game, which was 48. They're now at 38, so 10 away. We'll see if they can make it towards that line. Not that it matters by any means, but... That's something fun for us to keep uh, keep an eye on as we'll get a high stick. Not the penalty, of course. Another whistle. I think before the second period ended, they knew that we were coming up on Todd's bedtime, and they said, I think we should probably slow the pace of play down here right. in the third period because we know Todd needs to be home and get in bed. They're, they're all against me. I don't, I don't know what I did to deserve this. I told you, there's another <laughs> whistle, so only a few seconds go off the clock. This time we'll get a penalty. It's an interference call, and the McKendry bench is happy about it. It looks like they will head to the power play as heading to the box. Will Smith. Will Smith. He's questioning me, me, and the, and the referee says, yeah, number 11, that's you. So we'll see what McKendrew can do here on the power play. 14.39 left in the third period. I think Will Smith is just looking for a breather. He took a uh, penalty in the third period last night as well. So something about that third period penalty box he must like. The power play looking for their third goal of the game. Steven Breitschert was the last goal scorer for McKendry. And skating up ice with the puck is Breitscher. Throws around the far side. Maryville able to scoop the puck up and they'll clear it. Trevor Voida there for McKendry. He'll get it back at his own blue line. Surveys the ice and will go D to D. Brad Richardson fires it to the near side, and McKendry will just slow things down right now. That one almost went in the back of the net. <laughs> Voida with it. Drops it back. It 
Skating up ice is Connor Mullins. That one might have glanced off his stick. McKendry unable to get inside the Maryville zone as Jake Charche is showing chase and then will peel off. Far side at the red line, dumped in. Coffey out of his net, he'll stop the puck. White there trying to clear, he whiffs on the attempt. It's intercepted by Hunter. Hunter able to flutter it out of the zone. And Jake Charche will give chase. I love Charche playing up there on the penalty kill. He does a great job at, at pressuring the defenders, not letting them out of their zone. Well, it seemed like for that first minute or so, that one is intercepted, trying to get around his man. It was Campbell McLean. However, he takes a spill at the blue line. But now he has the puck, and he'll play it back for his defenseman in Benji Rutkai. Charche with it as Maryville is back to five-on-five five hockey. A stretch pass. Off the glass. Corpse is up there. The big defenseman makes his way back. Skating with the puck now is Stephen Breitscher. He loses it. And now at his own blue line is Ben Anderson. That pass intercepted. T.J. Prexler in. Prexler, sauce pass. Backhanded pass. That one goes, oh, okay. right through the crease. Rutkai able to keep it in. Puck down low behind the net. Backhanded pass. A little, little spinorama behind the net. Cor Corpse with it. Blue line. Finds Lucas Adams. Adams plays it to the far side. Rutkai able to get it in deep. Adams will now have to find the puck on the near side half wall. Now to the corner. Tied up. Maryville comes out with it. Rutkai off the stick as he went to Colt Corpse. Corpse with it in the neutral zone, finds Adams. Adams will play it forward for Prexler. TJ Prexler stops and starts, looking for Adams once again. He gets it back. Corpse with it at the blue line, fires one on. That one goes wide. Zlotti after the puck on the far side half wall. Plays it to Lucas Adams, goes right under his stick. Stick is lifted by Ben McArthur, but now here come the Bearcats. Shot on, stop made by Coffey with 11.07 remaining here in the third period. Still a 10-2 game in favor of the Saints. 39 shots for Maryville, 18 for McKendry. Face off one by the Saints. Puck comes out in front of the net. It's able to be knocked away by Ed Coffey. Zlotti with it. Zlotti trying to get around his man. He can't. He takes a spill. However, McKendry unable to get a clean breakout. The puck does come out of the zone. It's at the blue line of Maryville, and now it's going the other way. Olsen. His pass. Hit a stick. Shot on, and that one is stopped. The shooter was Brett Ursulak. We've seen Ursulak jump up in the play. He's had a few opportunities to put the puck in the back of the net. I like what I see from the new defenseman for the Saints. Yeah, he definitely fits right in with this defensive core, playing the style that Coach Hogan is going to ask of his players. They want him to be smart, but if you have an opportunity to jump up in the play, go ahead and take it. And, and then it's up to the forwards to, to get back and help out should that need arise. Near side, Timon Prexler with it. Takes a hit. And the puck comes out of the zone. Going back forward is Garrett Hunter. Hunter stops below the dots. Trying to find Timon Prexler. Hits off the stick of a Bearcat. Maryville digging for the puck. They're able to come out with it. That's Sam Edwards. Edwards at the blue line, arm is up, and we'll get an offsides call with 9.59 remaining here in the third period. Chuck, me and you almost ran into uh, each other this summer. At a local concert event. Yeah, we did. Story of the year in Yellow Card, Marshy. Absolutely. What a great show that was out at the St. Louis Music Park at the Centene Community Ice Center. Great concert. 
That will be the home of the national tournament this year for yes, the ACHA. Will. What a transition. Smooth as silk. <laughs> Icing called, 9.43 left to go here in the third period. Still a 10-2 game. Chuck, I tried to get you to come down to sit by me, but unfortunately my phone service was not working. Oh, I've heard that one before. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine, Mark. No, I'm being serious. Okay. I'm being dead serious. I appreciate it, Marshy. I would have loved to see a nice little concert with you. Shot off the faceoff. Whistle blown, 939. Unfortunately, our paths did not cross that, <laughs> that fateful night. I know, I was sending you pictures, and hey, where you at? And I didn't receive any of those pictures. Mm -hmm. Shot wide. Jackson White smacking at the puck. It squirts loose on the far side. Cameron Ware able to play it forward. Able to get it in is Benji Rutkai. Charche is there. Pass out front, hits off a body. Maryville able to maintain possession. Puck at the blue line now for White. White fakes the pass, shoots one on, and that one might have maybe ridden up the, the toe of the, of the blade. It was not on target. Charche feeds it back down low for Cameron Ware. Ware battling for the puck below the dots. Charche getting in as well. Errant pass at the blue line. Wrist shot on. That one goes wide. Corpse able to poke it forward for Charche. Charche back down low. McLean fighting for the puck as well. However, he gets knocked down. Corpse able to keep it in. Good keep by the big defenseman. McLean with it. McLean on the half wall. He loses it. Corpse able to keep it in once again. Wrist shot on. Rebound. Shot. They score! Cameron Ware puts it in the back of the net. With 8.16 left to go here in the third period, Cameron Ware makes an 11-2 game. Great finish by the Saints. But I got to give a lot of credit to Colt Corbs for keeping that puck in multiple times yep. at the blue line. Yeah, we talked about keeping the fundamentals within the game, and that's what you want to do, especially if you have active defensemen. You want to get move your feet moving, keeping things alive at the blue line, as you mentioned, keeping it in the zone. You get a tired group of McKendry stuck out there in that situation, and then Cameron Ware was able to make them pay. McKendry in, unable to get the shot off. A good opportunity for Jack Harris of the Bearcats. Less than eight minutes left here in the third period. A strong showing by Maryville in their home opener. TJ Prexler, the captain, trying to feed his teammate, driving the net. That was Hunter Flores. Flores, drop pass. Adams, drags, shoots. That one off a shin pad and goes wide of the net. Flipped into the neutral zone. Timon Prexler able to glove it down. Here he comes. Drops it to his brother, TJ. TJ shot on. That one goes off the stick and hops up into the air at the blue line. Speaking of hopping, that one hops over the stick of Ursulak. Ursulak gets it back from TJ Prexler, trying to dance around the defender, unable to. Good defense right there from Jonathan Davenport. Maryville with the puck inside their own zone. Far side, Henderson with it. Henderson looks up, dances around the defense. Still with it, loses it now. Near side corner as he's battling for the puck. TJ Prexler trying to help him out as well, but it rims around to the far side. Zlotti chopping at it. It squirts up into the air. And McKendry able to come out with it. Bearcats turn it over. And it's sent down the ice. Olsen in on the forward check. It's rimmed around all the way down towards Ed Coffey. And we'll get an icing call with 6.17 left to go here in regulation. Speaking of Ed Coffey, Marshy, I was 
talking with Ed Coffey's mother who's sitting right in front of us here at the Hockey Center. And she was saying how Ed's dad is watching from the Vancouver Islands. We also talked to, I believe it was Sam Edwards' mother who was saying that they watch from all across the world too. And really cool to hear about the families and the friends watching their loved ones play from all around this, this globe as we bring you Maryville Hockey live on YouTube. So, hey, if you're all watching, your loved ones watching, thank you, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we love to hear when, when you guys are watching us. So, What's, a, what's a globe? The, the uh, earth is flat. Oh, oh, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do, we do appreciate everyone that's tuning in. We feel sorry that they have to listen to the Three Stooges call a <laughs> hockey game, but... You know, it is what it I mean, is. It's, it's 11 to 2. I... Todd, you've been joking around the whole night. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> We're trying to be serious here. Come on now. No, I can't have that. Get your head in the game. <laughs> Why start now? Puck inside the neutral zone. Aaron Pass a little too far out front. We'll get another icing call with six minutes on the dot left here in the third period. We had the shot counter at 42 right now. 48 was our number. We're playing a little game amongst ourselves to see if Maryville can eclipse their total from last night. They're six away from tying it. Okay, all right. Six minutes, six shots away. Will they get it? Yes. Todd says no. I, well, of course, I, I don't <laughs> remember kidding. speaking. Of course he's <laughs> <laughs> wow, we are back. Near side half wall. I'm losing all my stuff over here. Don't worry, Todd. Next week, or next home game, Chuck will get the, the brunt of it. <laughs> and then the following game, I'm sure I'll be the the, the butt of the... Excuse me, Marshy? Never it's mind. Easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I see it's already started. Got to protect the license. 529 left here in the third period as the net comes loose. Haven't really seen that a lot lately, even though that used to be a, a, a real issue a couple Goodness. years ago. Remember the national tournament two years ago, it was coming off about every play. Yeah. It actually ended up costing a team a game, if I'm not I want to say it was mistaken. Indiana Tech back then. I, I, I Don't quote me on that, but yeah. I won't. A team, <laughs> thanks Marsh, the net actually came off and a team scored and they allowed it. So, Maryville that summer melted the ice. We were on that, we were on that call too. We were. That's probably why I remember it. <laughs> it's all your fault. Probably. <laughs> Dumped in. Charche in on the four check. Bouncing putt, arm is up. Linesman calls an icing. 5-12 left to go here in the third period. Chuck, I know you're a big music buff. Yeah. You missed my 303 reference earlier. Did I really? You did. There was 303 left on the clock in the second period. Okay. You missed it. Man. Yeah, 303. They were they were popping back in the day, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know? they're not famous anymore, so maybe we could stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and get back to some good old hockey with five minutes left to go here in this one. Corpse plays it off the boards. Charche picks it up. Charche in looking for the driving teammate, and that would be Campbell McLean. Three on two for the Saints. McLean with it at the dot. Plays it back down low for Ware. Cameron Ware. Puck knocked off his stick. He got it back for a brief second, but Charche is there to help him out. Charche shoots one on. It goes just wide. Ben McArthur at the blue line. McArthur plays it back down low. Ware is there. Gets a stick lifted. Charche is just everywhere, it seems like. He doesn't stop moving his feet. He doesn't. That, Jake Charche, he's quick, and like I said, he just doesn't stop moving. Stretch pass, finds Cameron Ware. Ware is in. Thought about stopping to try and make a move. However, the puck is knocked off his stick. Ben McArthur stepped up. He took a hit in the corner. TJ Prexler waiting. 
and see if that puck will squirt loose. It's in the corner near side. McArthur fighting for it. Cameron Ware fighting for it. McArthur able to knock it out of midair. Cameron Ware with it. TJ <laughs> Prexler helping out. Little reverse hit from Cameron Ware. The physicality is coming out here yeah. late in this game. Kept in by Ben McArthur. Good save at the blue line. However, he loses the puck. And now McKendry will take over as Jack Harris will go D to D. Lucas Adams steals the puck away. Shot on. Oh. They score again. And it's Hunter Flores. That would be his first as a Saint. Marshy, that play was all because of the forecheck by number 93, Lucas Adams. Got in there behind the goal, stole the puck, and passed it right in front for Flores to put it in the back of the net. 12-2 with 3.10 left to go here in the third period. Lucas Adams has had an incredible night. Yes, he has. Two goals last night as well. Arm is up from the, from the referee, the, jeez, uh, I almost said the line judge. <laughs> I was talking about baseball earlier, almost called the bench a dugout. Ooh, right in front of the net. That was a, a risky play. So I called the benches a dugout earlier, and now I'm calling the linesman a line judge. Adams. Looking for T.J. Prexler. That shot was blocked. Tried to find him again. McKendry unable to clear it. Ursulak with it. Back down low. Adams knocked off his feet, but was able to make the pass to Ursulak. Shot blocked. T.J. Prexler with it. Up top to the blue line. White to Adams. Adams top of the circle. Ooh, looking to find T.J. Prexler for the one-timer. Adams gets it back on the near side half wall. Funnels it down low. Jackson White down there as well. He'll play it back down low. Below the dots, it pops up. McKendry just having a tough time getting the puck out of the zone all night long. They do right there, but now it's going right back in. Henderson with it. Henderson knocked off the puck, but he's fighting for it in the corner. Making a few moves with Steven Brakeshirt. However, he's unable to get it out of the zone. Henderson with it. Henderson, near side. Ursulak to Henderson. A little too far out front. Ursulak able to keep it in. Henderson now trying to pick it up. It goes off the body of Olsen. Breitschert with it. Breitschert skates it out of the zone for McKendry. And he'll hit the red line and dump it in. Rimmed around the near side. Waiting for the puck is Zlotti. He's unable to get it. 105, 104, as we approach the one minute mark. Left to go in this one. Olsen, racing after the puck. I'm sure he's looking for that hat trick. Less than a minute to go here in this one. A fantastic evening for Maryville Saint fans. They have a commanding 12-2 lead with 40 seconds left to go. It looks like that will be the final here tonight unless we get another goal late in this one. But a fantastic game for Maryville. You have to be excited if you're Coach Hogan. Absolutely. Coming off a 4-3 win and then you come along with this commanding win. Uh, play like you want to play as Coach Hogan will be happy with this one. Corpse with it at the blue line. Time is winding down as we approach the 10 second mark. And we'll get a whistle and here they come. Yep. The fisticuffs and the strapping. We had to figure at one point, at some point, we would see something like this occur. Especially if you're McKendry, you want to get a pound of flesh. You know, not going your way on the scoreboard tonight. Right. But maybe you can impose some physicality late in this one to let them know, hey, we're not going to let this happen the next time we play each other. Not surprising to see Will Smith in the middle of things down there as, we, as he likes to be. He's a feisty player, great hockey player. 
and they're just going to run the clock as referee Bethman says, just run it out, fellas. Five seconds, four seconds. Maryville's going to come out with a 12-2 win over McHenry. Like Chuck said, a big win for the Saints in their home opener tonight. A 12-2 final against the McKendry Bearcats. They take both games to start off the year. A 4-3 victory in last night's game at McKendry tonight. A 12-2 victory on home ice at the Maryville University Hockey Center. Just a fantastic game overall from an offensive standpoint. This is exactly what we want to see heading into the new year. And it was a situation where... The way things stack up on paper, you, you figured that Maryville should come out the, vic uh, the victory in both games. But it's also about stepping on the ice, getting things done. Maryville did that both nights, getting two wins, starting the season off right. Uh, they have a few more series that kind of get progressively tougher as the season goes along. And then obviously you get the, the big one against Central Oklahoma. Yeah, uh, and but it, it's all building towards that. You can't look too far ahead. So far, they've done that two games here against a team that you should beat, and they got the the job done. Yeah, I think resiliency is is the is the you know word of the night. They were resilient. They wouldn't let McKenzie really get into it. Twelve to two, forty four shots to twenty one shots. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the same amount of shots McKenzie had last night was twenty one. So uh, you know, good showing by Maryville and. As we always do, guys, you know we want to wish McKendry a great season and a great year of hockey. Absolutely. We'll have our final thoughts after this one to break this game down. So stick around with our post-game show. A 12-2 final in favor of the Maryville Saints. We'll be right back here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. St. Louis, 314-645-2000. There's a company that's cutting our fuel use by up to 5%. But it isn't a solar, wind, or hydro energy startup. It's an oil company, Schaefer. Their oils are consistently proven to boost efficiency and reduce fuel consumption by up to 5%. When Schaefer started making lubricants in 1839, they didn't set out to be green. But efficiency has always been part of everything they do. Reduce. Rethink. Rely on Schaefer.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. It's time for the post-game show. Alongside Chuck Krause and Tapanula, I'm Andrew Marsh. A 12-2 victory for the Maryville Saints tonight over the McKendry Bearcats. Just a great game offensively for Maryville. What would you guys think overall? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much out of the gate. Maryville coming out red hot. We talked about it. Six goals in the first 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes, in fact. Uh, you're up 7-2 to two after the first period, and, and Chuck talked about it, keeping your foot on the gas, and they did that with five more goals in the rest of the game. Yeah, exactly what, what you want to do at your home opener. Come out flying, scoring three goals right away. I think they had three goals before McKendry had even a shot on goal. So exactly like you just said, Todd, they came out flying, they kept their foot on the pedal, and they just kept on going. Yeah, last night the team had 48 shots on net. Chad Purdy did a great job yeah. at shutting this Maryville team down. Granted, McKendry lost. It was a 4-3 game, a much closer score than what we saw tonight. But it seemed like once they got going there in the first period, the goals were bound to come. Yeah, and, and when Maryville came out as hot as they did, it was kind of important because you don't allow McKendry to get any of that belief that they had last night. You don't allow them to think that it's going to be a close game. You chase Purdy out of the net pretty early on in the contest. You score a goal on the new goalie on the first shot. So, I mean, basically Maryville did everything they could possibly do to snuff out any kind of Bearcat hope in this contest. Yeah, and they were able to, you know, let the let the goal scoring go across the team, guys. I think seven different goal scorers for Maryville. So yeah. it wasn't like two or three guys had everything going for him, right? It was it was a lot of players from Maryville, and that's exactly what you want to see. When you're getting a lot of goals, you want to spread the wealth, let a lot of guys get them chances, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, you talk about spreading the wealth. We had a little joke going during the broadcast about who would score the hat trick first. You had so many different guys that could have done it. Of course, right when we said it, Lucas Adams did it, and he's been fantastic so far this season. It's only been two games, but my goodness, this guy already has five goals on the year. And he's helping out this team in so many other ways, too, not only on the score sheet. Uh, you know, you would have to watch the game just to see what he's done for, for this team so far this year. And we saw that last year. Right. Even when he came in in his first season with Maryville, he scored in his first game. You knew that he would be a special player. And so far in his third season now, he's, he's looked great. Yeah, and you want to give your coach a reason to do what they do in terms of your placement in the lineup. Adams has basically been the number one center for this team for uh, a couple seasons now and justifying that here with his hot start. Yeah, and to see that some of the newer faces to Maryville, guys, you know, Josh Olson comes over, Flores comes to play for us. They're getting goals. Olson, we thought, was going to have the hat trick as yeah. well, but he gets two tonight. Flores gets on the scoreboard, so it's nice to see uh, the new faces get some goals and uh, say their name here on the broadcast. Well, the Saints start 2-0 and to start off the year. They'll take on Illinois State on the road next weekend. What do you think the biggest problem for Maryville will be that Illinois State presents to them? They've had a, a, an odd time with Illinois State over the last couple seasons, uh, back when it was a, a, a division matchup, conference matchup, and then last year, even though they weren't necessarily in the same conference, they still kind of struggled with the Redbirds. I think you need to kind of put that to the side. You need to come out, play the way that they did against McKendry. Don't necessarily try to alter anything based on the fact that you're playing Illinois State. But if they do that, the way that we saw them play here tonight, they can still come out with two Ws. Yeah, like you said, they've, they've had trouble with Illinois State. It's hard to put your finger on exactly what it was they were having trouble with. But I think the biggest problem is going to be Illinois State and McKendry are two completely different teams. Right. So Maryville's got to have a good week of practice, uh, get their feet under them, get their composure, work hard this week, and take it to uh, Illinois State. So Illinois State will be the opponent next weekend on the road for Maryville. They'll be back at home in October, October 1st. 145 puck drop. I mean, it's, it's going to be different. Todd, that's different, guys. That's Are good you going to be awake yet? Am I going to be awake? Maybe. <laughs> we'll find out <laughs> when it comes time. October 1st will be our next broadcast here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. Apparently that was such a funny joke. Our producer, Eric Skelton, is laughing. Uh, it is a funny joke. It's a, it's a good one. And everyone, we appreciate you listening or and, and, and watching tonight on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network. If you're new to the program, 
of course, we're a bunch of goofballs, and that's pretty much how we'll keep it all season long. So yeah. we hope you enjoy that. Uh, we hope you enjoy the hockey because it's great hockey. A 12-2 victory tonight for the Saints. We hope to see you next time here as the Saints will take on Midland October 1st, 145 puck drop. So we'll see you then, everyone. Have a great evening. We want to thank our producer, Eric Skelton, the St. Louis Science Center as well, Lydia Manning, our ringside reporter, and everyone that helped make this broadcast a great one to start off the year. For Chuck Krause, Todd Panula, I'm Andrew Marsh. Everyone have a great rest of your evening. You've been watching the Maryville Saints right here on the Maryville Saints Hockey Network.